See, this is the point where I typically go, how are you doing, YouTube? But there's a twist to, the, to, to it all this time. And that would be... I'm actually streaming to Facebook, too, which is weird. Um, so uh, for these live streams, typically the ones that we add, like, humans to, um, we... Uh, we uh, most of us use a, a company called StreamYard. And uh, and with StreamYard, um, if you have the premium one, you can shoot it to a couple of different locations. Never really used that before, but the guys from NerdSense kind of um, uh, picked up the tab on one of these. So we've been testing it out and stuff like that. So might as well go live to both channels. So yeah, we're going to be doing a live uh, review tonight. Um, we're going to be doing a live review of this beer right here, which be... Lower the boom barley wine style ale from 21st Amendment Brewing. 21st Amendment Brewing, I cannot tell you the last time I had a beer from them. Um, their fireside chat is probably some one of my favorite beers uh, that they made. Um, I believe I reviewed that one. Um, we've actually on my old radio show before the podcast, we had um, Tim Matthews, I believe is his name, is the head brewer and kind of the, the, the guy going there. He's um, been on the show a couple of times. Um, and um, this is from that brewery. But there's a little bit of twist on this sucker right here is that I picked this up today. Yeah, I picked this up today and I picked it up for $12 uh, four pack. That's not too shabby. And um, not only did I pick up for $12 a four pack, it's four and a half years old. Oh, no, it's a 2015 version. Um, the box said 2016 on it. But if you actually look on the bottom of that, that's actually their dating code. They do a Julian dating system. So that 171 would be the day and the five would be the year. So it was in the middle of the year of 2015. This was canned. Um, I think this might be the oldest uh, canned beer um, that I've ever reviewed. I believe it is. Uh, maybe I did a 1050 that was older. But I mean, you know, cans kind of got popular around, you know, 11, 12, 13. Um, but rarely were people putting barley wine or stout or anything like that in it. Um, and almost nobody was using these tiny little Red Bull style kind of um, kind of can. So, yeah. I'm kind of interested to see how this sucker held up. Now, I've never reviewed this before. I've had this beer before. Um, it's an American barley wine. It comes in at 11 and change, right? 11.5% alcohol by volume, um, 92 IBU. So that's the kind of twist on here is that they typically, um, this beer from what I remember is kind of like a, a, a new school hopped American barley wine, like a citrusy hopped American barley wine. So I'm kind of curious, you know, after four and a half years, how this has have trended and how this is, how this, changed over time so it should should be quite fun before we do all that though let's do a couple comments we got carlos pena trying in saying cheers matt and then we have bill bach what's going up matt what's up matt no uh, not much what are you drinking bill bach you usually get some kind of crazy awesome stuff fox farm or fucking whatever you're, you're you're a crazy man when it comes to those new england kind, kind of beer so we'll see what's what i'm sipping on a little bit of five rabbit brewing right now a little golden ale did a couple beer reviews my camera there you go see I started to use my iphone again for my stream camera and i think it looks like nine billion times better um yeah so anybody wants to buy gopro let me know um but yeah this is pretty tasty it's a mutueka hopped golden ale so it's pretty fun yeah so let's dive into this in a couple of minutes we have uh spirit animal chowing in saying cheers matt what's going on so yeah i'm just super peaked and the funny part is this place that i found this at no, no, no this place is like eight minutes away from where i live they they're like go check out my instagram for the video they it's this mom and pop little tiny super mom and pop store like it's tiny it's like a general store like it's a grocery store but it's about the size of a small house it's very very small and um but they have a beer cooler they have a cooler in the back, like a big cooler for soda and all that stuff. But then they, you walk into the cooler and it's just beer. That's how they store their beer. It's just on racks back there. And there's all kinds of crazy ass old shit because that's how Jersey rolls. And I took a little quick video of it and I posted it to my Instagram. And um, yeah, I went through there. I found I found some old stuff, some um, a couple year, two, two year old um, Third Coast from Bell's, which is um, their kind of Christmas barley wine. I'll let that sit for another 19 years and I'll go pick it up. But it's so cool cramped like it like standing straight my arms out of my sides i'm like brushing the edges of all the racks and all the beer is like haphazardly stacked so 
it is worthy of going into this place and actually like digging and, and, and clawing through and trying to find some gems. Cause there's gotta be gems in there. There's gotta be more than just this. This is the easiest one that popped out at me. And they have probably about five or six more of these four packs there. So if this thing's fantastic, I'm going to go back and get some. Um, uh, Oh, the Clinton Watts says, is that clock behind you old or just made it look to, no, that, that, that is an old style clock, like from the sixties, like old style, the beer. Um, I've had it forever. I've had, I got it as a birthday, not birthday, I got it as a Christmas present. Oh, and this is Clinton Watts asking that actually. Um, he's, um, my buddy, Chris gave this to me for Christmas, maybe about like six years ago four years ago something like it's probably like six or seven years ago i mean i never put it out i just had it and I, it was down here like you could never see it and then um and then someone on instagram no twitter a beer person on twitter um m saunter um she actually put up as like an old picture of old style and she was like oh, it's old style time so i took a picture of it and i said it's always old style time because <laughs> it's a clock and i'm like why don't they have this out so i put it up there and i plugged it in and i was surprised one that it still works and two that it actually works and keeps time look at that it's 5 10 right now i randomly set it close to that so it's only it's it's been on and it's keeping time and it lights up it's from like the 60s so yeah loving the old timey clock back there <laughs> anyway <laughs> nice catch dude uh anyway so yeah so we're gonna crack in this sucker let's do that we got about i don't know we got a couple two three people watching got a couple likes a couple hearts because this is going to facebook and that's kind of weird because i've never done that before let's get this little glass here take a little sippy poo gold nail cleanse the palate if you will mm. okay oh that sounded awesome so let's do this do this proper Mm, mm. Yeah, citrusy American barley wine. Let's see how this sucker keeps. Now, full disclosure, I'm I have no idea when this beer actually made it. A little bit of dirty glass mafia. When this beer actually made it into the cooler of the place that I purchased this from, but it wasn't a cooler. So I am I'm almost certain. This has been sitting there since 2015. So this has probably been kept at 43 degrees, I'm guessing, uh, since then. So that's going to kind of curb a little bit of the typical ageability of a barley wine. In a perfect world, you would have taken this beer. You would have put it, you know, in your cellar 50 to 60 degrees. You let it kind of let it grow a little bit quicker. Let it kind of become something on its own. So we'll see what's what. But I mean, as far as uh, barley wine goes, it's pretty much spot on. You know, it looks it has that rich kind of orange slash slightly reddish kind of hue to it um it's got a nice soft little kind of caramelly hat on it um looks very much like almost like apple cider-esque as far as coloration goes um but yeah it looks like a pretty beer yeah not much of a head big barley wine wasn't expecting much there but as you can see it's got that nice kind of khaki color to it. i said caramel caramel khaki you know what i'm getting at let's get those it's not it hasn't gotten to the point where it is that kind of uh sugar daddy that i love barley wines to get to now it is an american barley wine so it's going to take a little longer to progress to, towards that but it does have this nice burnt brown sugar characteristic to it most and more importantly as they would say on the side of the can here it is an american style barley wine ale packed with the citrusy hops so let's talk about that for a minute you're talking about a citrus hop pale ale not really getting the citrus hops in here um it is more kind of just a um a soft kind of tannic tea like ghost of hops past as i typically like to put it um but it's not vibrant it's not super big it's not like a it's it, let's put it this way it's a 2015 can it doesn't smell like a 2015 bigfoot if you're going to talk about some of the more like aggressively hopped kind of American barley wines, you know, Bigfoot is pretty much the, the Marion Webster dictionary of that. And this doesn't have that. It's more of a soft caramel washed out caramel. It's not super rich, not super sweet. The nose actually isn't overtly vibrant, especially for 11.5% beer, but you can tell it's a barley wine. You can tell it's an older American barley wine, but it smells pretty. Let's dive in. Cheers.
Okay. It's all right. Nothing special. I was hoping for quite a bit more. Let's put it that way. Um, it definitely has a bittering, um, a, a bite from the hops left from it. But they're all pretty much base, kind of old school, fuggly style, kind of bittering hops. There is a little bit of marmalade thing going on. I think that kind of marries, because it is a burnt brown sugar from the way the malt has kind of turned into. So you get this rich maltiness to it. And then you get this little bit of kind of orange, which I think is coming from the hops. And when you combine them both together, you get more of a kind of sweet kind of orange marmalade kind of thing going on with those kind of bittering tannic tea-like kind of hops. Yeah, it's not a negative beer, but I ain't such an imagination. It's an age to what I wanted it to be. Am I glad I purchased it? Absolutely. That hop kick, though, man, there is aggressive hoppiness to this. But it's it's lost all those fruitiness, except for that little bit of orange thing that makes me think of marmalade. And it's been left with this kind of... It's weird because it's not, it's not like piney, but it used to be. You know, it's that ghost of hops past I've talked about previously. It, it, it's aggressive... And it's, hmm. You know what there's, I'm trying to think of the best analogy. So, you know, there's that thing where someone's like, what would you rather fight? A, 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 a eight, one, eight foot tall chicken, you know, or one and 20 foot tall chicken, or would you rather fight like 2000? Um, like one inch tall chickens, you know, that kind of thing. I think I'm making sense. This is 2001 one inch tall chickens and the, the way the hops kind of come off and that is it, it's aggressive and it's a, in, in the amount of hops that are in here, but the age has kind of took the edge off of things, and even though you can still taste the hefty the amount of hops that are involved. Yeah, it's good. I don't have flashlight. Kind of curious to look in there. I don't really see anything. You guys are probably not going to see it. Oh, yeah, you can. Look at that. Can't really. There's no kind of smut, sludge or any kind of funkiness kind of floating around in there. So that's nice. Doesn't taste overtly oxidized. I mean, that's kind of makes sense. You know, if they fill this correctly um, and it's a most likely going to be a better seal than a cap, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it's going to probably be a little bit better vessel. Um maybe um then age beer uh a little bit of oxidation but it did this beer a little bit good let's put it this way if this beer was in a bottle let's reverse that course this beer was in a bottle and it wasn't kept at uh fridge temp oh my goddamn camera mm, hold on my camera this is the thing that annoyed me about my iphone i don't know why it's doing it let me go up there and fix it give me a half second uh there we go Hold on a second, guys. There we go. All right, they come back here. Sorry about that. That's the thing I have to figure out with my phone. Um, it's a way better camera than any webcam I have. Even my GoPro isn't as good, but um, it's sometimes it disconnects. I use it for like four hours last night. I didn't do it, so it's random. Anyway, um, but yeah, this is a fun little experiment. I'm not angry I picked it up. I, can't, I have three more cans. Maybe I'll send one or two of these off to a reviewer so they can give me uh, their thoughts on it. But it's a, you know, it's a fun beer. So yeah. Mm. Not too shabby. Here you go. Beer review over. Let's see. I'm up for a little bit of a chat. So let me um let me uh let me throw this out there to see if anybody wants to join for I'm not gonna hang out all that long. Let me see if anybody wants to sit and chat real quick. I'll send these off to a couple of groups I'm in, see if anybody's game, and then we'll go from there. Mm. That 
I threw it out to a couple of groups that might join. So we'll see what's what. So there you go. Put my headphones on in case anybody jumps in. So how are you guys doing today? Let's get some questions. You guys have any, que have any questions or anything like that about the beer or anything else? We'll go over all the other stuff. I did a couple different reviews today. Typically when I do these live reviews, I try to do like bigger beers. Um, and what I'll do is I'll save them for the end. I'll do like one or two beer reviews. I did uh, that one five rabbit I told you guys. Uh, and then I um, did this sucker here. Uh, waist high from cane brewing um i went to a local bottle shop today they had this on this is a session ipa yeah, coming in at 4.4.6 4. percent and this is pretty fun i'm digging this and a nice kind of uh, where is it way to expect kind of haze wise for low abv kind of hazy um and i i mean cane's one of my favorite breweries so it's honestly it's it's no no uh no surprise that i dig dig them um let's see victor uh villa villa sensor villa sensor cheers he says and then we have wind uh window beer review with thomas saying hi hello brother how are you um and then thomas says peace like and share man I like it when people like me i also like it when people hate me so <laughs> it's not saying much anyway um so yeah i did this this is really nice i'll post this review up hopefully shortly um so that's the actual one if we're going to look for um making lemonade out of lemons from me getting covid and luckily not experiencing anything overtly negative from it um other than the head cold and whatnot is that i ripped through my backlog of beer reviews so typically my fucking dog is shedding like a crazy man I shouldn't be wearing black with all this dog hair anyway um i got to rip through a ton of my backlog uh and beer reviews um to where i got i'm not saying i don't have a backlog i still have a backlog but i'm only about a week or I, you know i probably have about like 10 beer reviews and a backlog and uh yeah it's kind of fun that uh some of these beers that i'm posting now mystery beers are always kind of a bit out but you know this beer probably will get up quite a bit sooner than typical um which is kind of one of the fun things to actually rip through uh yeah i'm sure cheers from rcbh bud that's rochester beer hounds man those rochester people don't fuck around up there they're crazy man like you, you want to go have a good time go up to um go up to the rochester area the finger lake area go up there hit mortalis hit fifth frame hit you know i mean all those breweries other half head out the buffalo even and uh join that group say hey i'm coming to town i want to drink and you're you'll get fucking you get rolled you get rolled up on and fucking you'll be you'll be shotgun and doing chug videos and then wake up in a dumpster and fucking corning or some shit i don't know <laughs> that's how they roll up there but um but yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so we did the live stream yesterday for the um pre-game we did for the uh nerd since they do their holiday special that was quite fun uh, me and keith kind of hung out here if you tuned in and we kind of hung out and and drank a couple beers and shut the shit and talked about all kinds of stuff and and uh then headed over to the nerd sense guys if you don't know who they are sean and mike from nerd sense are some of the nicest dudes in the game uh if you have the wherewithal you would go to their channel watch that video feed and um you know comment like and subscribe as Thomas would say, and uh, just give those dudes a little bit of love. They deserve it. The guys from Nerd Sense are probably genuinely some of the nicest guys. They're like probably tied with Joe from Joe's Arcade as the nicest beer tubers on the planet. And um, yeah, I think they have like 600 or so subscribers. They should probably have 6,000 or so or 600,000 or so. So yeah, take time out of your schedule. Go over there. Click. Hey, because they're awesome. Um, and then we have a little bit of uh, comments from Hatchy Malachi here saying, cheers, Matt. Have you noticed a permanent difference with your senses since having COVID or are you completely back to normal? Honestly, I don't, I, it's, I think it comes and goes randomly. The senses, my taste is fine. My taste has essentially been fine the whole time. Now, sense of smell is actually, you know, it, it helps your sense of taste. It's, if you can't smell at all, it really does hinder your taste so it's not like i tasted 
exactly, but I could tell the difference. I could tell that I actually could taste the whole time. It was more that I didn't, I lost my sense of smell. I don't know people are, are like, you know, sense of smell, you know, it can go for weeks and months and all. And mine was gone for like completely gone to where I couldn't smell anything for three days, three whole days. And then it came back. And I'm not saying it came back a hundred percent, but it came back to the point where, you know, like I get, it is going to sound disgusting, but like I farted and I was like, oh, I could smell my own fart and stuff like that. You know, th- those smells that are typically a little bit less aggressive, not that my farts can't get aggressive. Believe me, they can. Um, but, you know, you know, if I was shoving something in my nose and smelling it as much as I could and I get a hint of something, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking, you know, I made the coffee and I'm in the other room and I could smell the aroma of the coffee brewing. Those that level of smell has come back. Like today I talked in this. And at the beginning of this um, live review, um, I, I said, um, you know, because I didn't really get a big nose or no, it was a different beer, actually. Um, and I said, I didn't get a big nose on the beer I was reviewing. And I'm like, it could be, you know, who knows? Maybe it's a little bit of COVID related stuff. But right before I came in here, I smelt the coffee maker being cleaned with vinegar. Now you'd be like, well, vinegar's a big smell. Coffee maker is one story up three rooms over <laughs> you know what i mean so it wasn't like i was like oh i could smell the coffee machine vinegar getting clean next to me no it's like literally halfway across the house so you know what i mean like i know i can smell um now am i smelling everything perfectly no but i think i'm smelling enough to where i can i i can i um i'm getting what i need to get for the most part you know so you know i feel good i just have this stupid lingering cough and honestly the lingering cough has to do with nasal congestion i have a subtle kind of nasally congestion thing that's kind of lingering um it's not like i like i can breathe it's more upper um here so it's not like clogging my nose to where i can't actually smell or breathe um but i get post nasal drip from it it makes me cough and i think that cough is kind of derived mostly from that as opposed to something covid related if that makes any sense but good question good question we have vanessa kitty chairman saying hello actually she just says hi but hello works too anyway so yeah let's see what we got going on here like i said i'm not up for the long haul as far as hanging out i figured i'm live i might hang out for a little bit and see what everybody's up to i am going to be playing some video games um tonight that is my goal so i don't want to sit and hang and do one of these uh here we go let's see wait did i post that to the wrong thing i don't know Mm -mm. i know it's very 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 interesting watch me uh, scroll through stuff oh oh actually I did not post that to the thing let me post this here Okay, so um, Vanessa Kitty kind of uh, follows up with saying, I take allergy med to keep my uh, the gills from nose at bay. Um, uh, Hatchie Malachi says, he's like, um, I know this time, last time you're, you're playing Jedi Fallen Order, did you pick up Squadron? Super impressive. I actually don't, didn't pick up Squadrons. Um, I should. Um, I, I loved actually Jedi Fallen Order. I ended up um, really digging on it. Uh, and um, I was, I wouldn't say it's one of my favorite games of all time, but it, there's so many of these kind of third person, third person action adventure games are what that's my milieu, that's what I love, that's my favorite kind of game. So it's it, it's right there, and as far as um, the shit I really dig on, but there's so many of those that I pick up and I play for I don't know, maybe you know, a third, a quarter of the way through the game. And I, I put it down and I never go back. 
I never did that with Jedi Fallen or Order. I followed it all the way through. I'm a Star Wars nerd. Um, you know, I saw the original movies, not the original one, but the, the uh, Jedi I saw in the theaters. Like it's been something I've watched for quite some time and been in Star Wars for forever. So I kept my thoughts and I really did enjoy or enjoy it. But outside of that, um, only other thing that really kept my attention was uh, Red Dead Redemption. Um, uh, and I do strictly single player offline, like story based stuff. So that I thought that game was fantastic, actually. Um, and outside of that, you know, I couldn't keep in the God of New God of War. I really couldn't keep up with. I've tried three times now to get in the Horizon Zero Dawn, but it's too RPG for my liking. I got sucked into FIFA again. <laughs> uh, I try not to get sucked into FIFA, um, but I got sucked into FIFA again. So I've been to FIFA and the crazy. I've been teetering back between golf, PJ Tour golf, and FIFA. Um, so I've been in that kind of thing. But I just downloaded the Cyberpunk. I know it's kind of the same thing as Horizon Zero Dawn as far as the RPG elements. And it also supposedly runs like hot garbage. Um, and has a ton of bugs, but I'm going to dive into that tonight and see what's what I'm looking for something. I'm looking for something. I need something new. I don't want to start in my old cycle and by old cycle. I mean, like I will go back and play all the metal gears or all the uncharted or play Bioshock or something like that. I wanted something new. So we'll see what's what, uh, but I'll keep an eye out for squadron. So I'll have to see, I, I totally missed that and I probably will love it. So I'll have to uh, see what's what, uh, Jason Keller says, uh, how you, have that Guinness barrel each stock yet? No, I haven't, and I'm, but I'm really actually interested to give it a whirl. So I, I will pick it up, and if I pick it up, I'm definitely going to review it. So um, Matthew uh, Matoyer says, cheers from Chicago. I had COVID myself back in May. Definitely not fun, no. I mean, again, I had it super mild. Uh, it basically sniffles and a cough. That was the bulk of it uh, with a little bit of nose fuck duckery, but uh, I was one of the very lucky ones. David Etchell says, American beer versus British beer. What do you want, man? Why can't we do both? Like, just enjoy both of them. Um, are you, uh, like, and if I were to break down your question into kind of, like, which is better, or more specifically, which one, if, let's say, you know, I get to choose, I can only drink British beer um, versus American beer, I'd pick I'd pick American. Um, but Britain is small. Very, very small. Compared to the United States, much larger swath of breweries to kind of go through. If you said European beer versus American beer, we have a totally different conversation to have. But British beer, yeah, no, I'll stick with the United States. Uh, Matt Pulaski uh, says, uh, what's a good price for Bourbon County? A local place has 2017 bottles for $13.99. Is that good? That is a good price for a 2017 bottle. I picked up a 2018 bottle today for $13.99 actually um, down the road for me. So I don't know if we're talking about the same place, but uh, yeah, uh, I think that's a good price. A uh, good price for, um, oh, let me rewind this back. Is it a good price? No. Are you going to find a better price? No. Bourbon County, that should be an $8 bottle of beer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm sorry. When you're giving me four 12 ounce bottles for 20 bucks a four pack, um, so you're talking about 12 times four, you know what I mean? 24, 48 ounces for 20 some odd bucks. Now you're giving me 16 ounces for 14 bucks. The math is, yeah, the math just doesn't really add up there, you know, as far as pricing goes. Um, right. Doesn't, so I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still cheaper going that way. So I would like the old format back. Uh, so I think it should be more like an, an eight to $9 bottle, but um, the prices I see, the good prices I see for Bourbon County Fresh is $10.99 and it basically, it's about a buck a year. And so, you know, you're looking $12.99 for $19 and $13.99 for $18 and you know what I mean? That is the kind of math that happens, you know? So, it is what it is. Um, and then we have Tomas Opant uh, saying, what's up, brother? Not going to join tonight. Basically, fucked already. Cheers for tonight, dude. Have fun drinking gaming, bro. I totally will. Um, and uh, uh, Renee, uh, uh, Janice says, B BCBS costs 20 euro here in the Netherlands. Um, yeah, 20 euro. But you have to think about the logistics. Um, how much does um, Netherlands, how much do you pay for Damolin barrel-aged beers? You know, this that, that, that Damolin beer right there. Probably cost me close to 10 bucks. 
you know, um, you know, or, you know, think of other stuff, uh, West Vedelin, um, how much do they cost? How much is, um, you know, St. Bernard Otters cost for you guys? How much is, um, you know, those kind of beers cost for you guys? You know, I'm talking about, you know, in, in, you know, a big, uh, a La Trap, uh, let's put it this way. And I talked about this the other day with, uh, Thomas open, um, like, uh, we pay t- mid twenties to 30 bucks for bottles of La Trap barrel aged quadruples and i think you guys over there pay like 14 15 euro maybe so it's the import price you know you got to pay that price it is what it is um hatchman actually says uh i just bought a 2020 barrel age 1054 pack for 17 bucks which i thought was reasonable especially compared to bourbon county well that is really good actually i was gonna say well it's not barrel age but you said the barrel age version that's actually really good um you know um but i actually think that the barrel-aged version of Bourbon County is better. I think it's a fantastic beer. I think this year is, uh, is one of, if not the best version I've had. Let's put it this way. So, the first beer I drank. <laughs> the first beer I drank out of COVID was Bourbon County 2020. Um, for the sole reason of, I don't know if I'm going to be able to taste anything, so let's go with the fucking fastball. Um, I, I actually, it was during a live stream, um, that I did the, um, uh, my live stream, um, that I did, what is it? A week and a half ago, um, or two, almost two weeks ago, um, to where it was, um, the Thanksgiving, the post Thanksgiving hang. And I drank a strictly pretty much drank non-alcoholic beer, uh, during that whole thing. And then, um, and, uh, and then crack that sucker. It was fucking delicious. So, yeah. And even in my uh, hampered state, it's quite fantastic. Uh, Thomas Open chiming in saying he, uh, I'm a beer drinker. You do the math about him being fucked already. Uh, but here's the point. Here's the thing, dude. You're Dutch and you're typing in English and everything you, you're typing makes sense and is spelled correctly. So you can't be that shitty. Um, and uh, yeah, Hatch Fletcher agrees. He says this year's BCBS has been my favorite since 2017. It's great, man. It was all like the vanilla marshmallow, the marshmallow vanilla. That's how it really hit me for this one. And it was really fantastic. I don't, I, try, I do review t- Burn County. I don't do it like everybody else. It's like everybody gets it in the second they get it to film it and review it. And I've done it in the past. Not saying I wouldn't do that. But, um, yeah, I want to, uh, let's put it this way. There you go. I'll, I'll be I'll be a scumbag right now. If somebody out there in Chicago can get me a bottle of the single variants, um, you know, I think there were what was I forget there was a Heaven Hill. Um, uh, I forget there were three specific single variants uh, they threw out in, in in Chicago. So basically, if you look in the back and you look at the kind of the date code and the kind of patch code in the back. They'll actually have the you know Heaven Hill HH is Heaven Hill, and then they have like um, you know what I mean. Well, uh, you know the, the the other one, the four. I think it was maybe four roses, and then the other one, uh, they did single batch variants of that. If some, if I can get one of those, I would love to do a side by side between a regular BCBS twenty twenty and one of the single batch variants. That's like that's like my kind of like like my white whale kind of little review I'm a, 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 I have going right now. I like I really want one of those. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Matt Matt, Matt uh, Matoyer said that's uh, Heaven Hill uh Bourbon Tra- uh, uh, Buffalo Trace and W2 was a I thought, I thought, I thought it was for, or was it Willitize maybe? Something like that. So, yeah. 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 Anyway, um, and it's like, fuck, damn it, Matt, applying logic to how wasted I am, crap. Yeah, that's what I do, man. I apply logic to everything. It's flawed logic. I want you to know that, but it's logic nonetheless. Um, uh, Hatchman actually said, I never found a variance in North Jersey. Maybe just not looking at the right stores. No, it's Chicago only. That's the only place that it'll, um, oh, Wild Turkey, uh, 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 WT. Uh, says uh, Kyle Ryan from the Hyper Reviews, um, but um, yeah, they're not they're not around here, uh, and um, you'd ha- they're only Chicago land. And Ross Stewart says I've seen feedback on each single batch variant. I'm sure you have, <laughs> but I am avoiding everything. <laughs> that way, if I do end up with a bottle of it, um, I can give unbiased uninformed decision that's like a lot of people like when i do beer reviews and i you know i i don't know the core 
information about the beer people like do your fucking research be a professional and be like hey motherfucker i'm trying to be influenced by some like i avoid everybody's shit like even in like private um private uh chats with some of the beer tubers i'll be like oh you you reviewed that and they're like yeah thanks for watching my channel i'm like if I see a beer that I haven't had, I just ignore it completely. I'm just not going to watch it because I don't want to. I don't want to have any kind of influence at all from anybody else if I'm going to end up reviewing a beer. So yeah. Anyway, um, uh, Devor chiming in saying, "Hey Matt, what's going on? What's going on, Devor?" Um, uh, Ross said, "Single origin was Chicago Land only." Yeah, and Wolf Turkey. I hope I would love if it was Wolf Turkey. I think Wolf Turkey is better than Wild Turkey, but unfortunately, it is Wild Turkey. And as Matthew. Toyer um, corrected himself. Yeah. Wolf turkey, man. <laughs> I love, I don't know. Wolf just sounds funny. I don't know why. Mm. Anyway. So, yeah. Not only did I pick this up today, this little sessionable jammer, I picked this up today. A little bit of hoof hearted. Yeah, it's their um, hot probs. Yeah, it's a double dry hot pale ale. You can see they're coming in a sweet 5.6% alcohol by volume. I like hoof hearted and what they do. Um, and the last several beers I've had from them has been quite nice. So I figured I'd pick this up. Not only because I've I've dug their stuff because they not that they made bad beer previously, but they've been very kind of hit or miss like herky jerky for me. It was thirteen ninety nine, which seemed creepily cheap for a hoof hearted beer, and uh, I'm glad I picked it up. This shit's delicious. Hmm. That's so good. That's good. Man, these low ABV chuggers. I'm just such a happy camper. Matt's on Matt's 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 on the train here. Wolf turkey might be better. It is. It's it's a uh, it's 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 wild turkey racked, barreled, and and distilled from attractive older people. I don't know. Um, yeah. Anyway, man, shit show status. Anyway, uh, let's see. What do we got going on here? So Pennsylvania is closed. We talked about that yesterday, but now people are still fucking going and trying to keep their breweries open like a bunch of assholes. So that sucks. We talked about that yesterday. Those people go fuck themselves. Um, Christmas coming up two weeks. I officially, officially, officially started my end of year list of my favorite beers what's going on rob hey how you going good man um yeah i was just telling everybody i uh, just like today I officially started my end of best of year list you don't do those do you end of best of uh no in the uk we've well before youtube i was doing i was i was writing uh, i was writing a blog <laughs> and um, I don't do that anymore. And um, we do um, these things called golden pints, which is the thing. Oh, that that's right. You're talking. We were talking about this last time. That. But there's um, something about. I mean, call me a, a, a YouTube whore, but um, there's something that I enjoy on some channels that I watch uh, of the uh, like a tier, uh, the, like a tier listing or a, or a top ten. Yeah, something, I, I enjoy those. And I thought, how could, could you do it with beer? Without just upsetting loads of breweries. <laughs> oh my god, it's fantastic! Yeah, I love it. I love, I love it. Like I love, like <laughs> I love lists. Like, last, I, like I think one year I did like eight lists for my end of years. Like I did, like I broke it down to categories. I made a list of shit I hate. You know what I mean? Like I made a list of just randomness. Um, I'm not gonna do that this year. That's not gonna happen. I'm gonna keep it simple yeah. this year. I always do that best ofs, and it, it, I used to. You do loads of best ofs, don't you? You do like kind of like I used shelfy to. beers I, and. All well, I, I'm gonna. I'm always gonna do the shelfy beers because pe that's people love that one because they're it's like it's beers people can actually buy and they're good. It's like it's everything beer isn't. You know what I mean? You can actually get it and it tastes good and it's probably cheap. Uh, who would have thunk it? 
Um, but um, <laughs> but yeah, I'll, I'll do shelfies, and I'll probably do like my best of top twenty, like Peter style. You know, yeah, like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, Peter does it. Uh, he goes into old reviews, doesn't he? I guess that's it yeah. for me. Um, most of the best beers that I've had, I've probably not done videos of. <laughs> just drank him. It's like well, well, with, well with Peter, I, he, I keep he, he reviews most of the beer that he drinks. Well, I keep mine strictly. It has to be reviewed in 2020. It yeah. has to be a review. Like even if I had a beer that was awesome, it just can't be on the list. My my yeah. list will be like it has to be in 20. Well, it has to. Uh, it goes from like late December because I do that around Christmas time, so I count those beers that I did mm-hmm. after post Christmas, and it has to do that. No mystery beers, and um, because honestly, I don't forget everything I drink, so I'd have to rewatch every fucking mystery beer, and that's not fucking happening. <laughs> um, and uh, and and like obviously shit like no home brew. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. Yeah. Like, just keep it simple. Um, and honestly, it's it's uh, it's super scientific how I do it. So this is what I do. I make an Excel sheet of every review I've done. Mm-hmm. And I scroll through it and I go, I think I remember liking that one. I think I remember liking that one. I think I remember liking that one. Whittle it down. Delete a bunch. And go, okay, this one's one. This one's two. This one's three. And then it's over. It takes me, it takes me way more to... to to do the video than it does to actually figure out which beers I'm going to include in it. Um, in previous years, I actually actually like I would record it and do some kind of like like um, um, layover kind of graphics and all that. Yeah. Now it's live. I do it live. Get it the fuck shit. done. I get the fuck <laughs> out of here. I'm like I can't. I can't be bothered. No, no more. Uh, no extraneous uh, energy. <laughs> Gonna yeah. waste it on this. I, I do appreciate the people who put the effort into it. Just, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I appreciate everybody who does effort. Stuff. I appreciate but people that put effort in, and it shows. I hate people who put effort in, and it just looks like they're trying too hard. I don't like those people. Yes. I, you, you question their reasoning for doing stuff. Yeah. Don't you? Kind of because there's definitely like that group of people that's like, I, you know, oh, beer, like, if you have a channel on YouTube, it has to be like every, so everybody right now. If you want to watch, if you want to make money on YouTube, you have, this is what you need to do. I'm going to, I'm going to mimic how you would make the video that you're going to do um, to make money. So we're black and go who farted. A lot of people think they're great. A lot of people don't think they're great. We're going to settle that today coming up next. And then you have a big graphic and then music (laughs) and all kinds of splash and shit. And then you have like, and then it kind of goes black, and then you have a big heavy beat, and then it's like you walking down the street, you know what I mean? And like, a, like with a drone flyover, <laughs> and then it'd be like, and then it's like, you know. here I am at uh, Who Farted Brewing in Ohio. It'd be like, you know, there's been a lot of talk about these guys. Oh, so, let me rephrase it. Sorry, <laughs> let me just start. You have to change your voice. So you'd be like, so we're we're in Who Farted right now in Ohio, and I know these guys <laughs> have been fantastic for quite some time, but. Really, it's been a lot of hype wrapped around a bunch of different things. And we're here today <laughs> to figure out if they really are the cream of the crop when it comes to the beer world. So let's figure it out. So there you go. Do that shit. And you make all the I, YouTube money. I, I want to see you do that. <laughs> oh, I'm doing it, dude. I actually – no, 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 no. I was going to do it this year. I, I, here you go. Spoiler for next year. <laughs> that was my April Fool's video for this past year, but I, I with COVID, I just didn't, I just didn't do it. So I'm gonna do like a full blown. I'm gonna do a full blown like production level, like fucking like the whole <laughs> cheesy thing. I'm gonna do it once, just once, and just do it like that, you know. Like and it's gonna be glorious. I want, I want frosted yeah, tips. Yeah. Frosted yeah, tips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Pull up in yeah. the car. Yeah. But, first, <laughs> but first, but yeah. first, but first, this, this, but first, this review is sponsored by. What, what, what would be the sponsor for it? Mm, <laughs> Who would be the sponsor hunting. for shitty beer reviews? No, no, it has to be something like. Well, you can always do MeUndies because everybody does MeUndies. Oh, but right, yeah. I just be like, this video is brought to you by MeUndies, um, and it's just um, me dancing around in underwear for three minutes. Blue cheese, <laughs> a classic on the shit podcast. You probably need oh. some size fed so much beer as well. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> that'd be perfect. Oh, uh, maybe maybe I need to contact some guys at um, actually at Blue Chew. Like, <laughs> when um, so. When <laughs> this is how bad, this is how obsessed I get with shit. So 
Do you remember a show called Mr. Show? Yep. David Cross. Okay. Yeah, David Cross and David Cross um, and, um, and Bob Oak. Yeah, Bob Oak. Okay. Yeah. They th- and this is um um this is not me telling lies right now. This is um uh let me see if I can find it. I'll I always it. think of there's a, there's a sketch about like an in, uh, like an audition. That's the one that no. sticks in my mind. No, no. Uh, oh no! This is the commercial. So when I said that whole, I was going to do the fake, like yeah, fake yeah. real YouTube thing, and then be sponsored by. This is who's my going to be my sponsor. Because um, <laughs> hey, I was gonna, what I was going to do was gonna I was gonna um uh oh my god. Um, what I was going to do was download this video and edit it, um, to, um, whatchamacallit, here we go, share screen, uh, no, cancel, can I share, can I share an app on this thing or no, I won't let you share an app, will it, okay, application window, there you go, um, right, here we go, this is... <laughs> Minoku butt plugs. So this is from oh, wow. Mr. Show. And this is going to be the commercial that I was going to download. And I was going to add a, th- a fourth butt plug to it. Um, <laughs> is it sharing the audio? Come on, guys. Can you hear that? No. 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 Oh, you son of a bitch. But not let me... Uh... What not? Let me share the audio. So you do when you when you do it. I think you get an option. Get like three options. Yeah, I don't. I don't actually see. It says stop sharing, but it doesn't say actual like share the audio. <laughs> I'm horrible at this shit, man. Um. Okay, let me yeah, do this. Stop. Yeah. Stop. Yeah, stop that. Do okay. it again, and you get like, one more you get, time. Like, three options. Get like three options to only really share it with it's audio. With, with with audio of. We've, it's not popping know, up, man. Oh, you know what? I can do it like this. The video. You, you, you do it. Yeah, I want you to do the audio for it. No, no, no. <laughs> if I do it like this, if I do it like this, it'll. I think it'll work. Okay. Oh, there it is, fucker. It's not. It's not. It's in the jet. There, you can hear that, right? Nope. No. Oh no. No. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> this is the skit. This is the this is all I'm gonna do for the show. Then this is just fuck up everything. There we go. Yeah, okay, well, one really last time, over. baby. One last time. We got it. We got it Come going on. on now. Oh no! See, it won't let, it won't do that. I have to. I have to share a window, not an application. If I share the application, I can't share the audio. That's what it is. There you go. Um, or at least it won't. So here we go. We're okay. always learning. There we go. There. Share audio. Share screen. Share. There we go. So there we go. Minoku butt plugs. There's the speed demon. <laughs> Let me the hear jazz it. Singer. There we go. Minoku butt plugs are the only butt plugs Wicked Scepter uses. <laughs> the speed demon. <laughs> The jazz singer, <laughs> King Prong, <laughs> all from Minoku. But what else is Minoku up to? Step this way, and we'll see. <laughs> so that's what that was going to be my uh, <laughs> that commercial. I was going to take. Well, I was, uh, what I was going to do is I was going to take the jazz singer out because that's a little bit too heavy-handed, racist for me to put on my channel. <laughs> Um, and, uh, <laughs> and then I was going to change it to something else like the hop, the hop smuggler or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, up, 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 like a hop. So many yeah. Of them in the... yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm, I'm still going to do it, but, uh, yeah. Cool. So, uh, what's it, what's it like over in, in your guys' side with COVID right now? Well, it's, it's over, isn't it? It's over. Got an, oh, got a yeah, vaccination. Yeah. It's over. It's finished now. We're back to normal. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Well, I mean, people are getting it. I mean, um, my parents are in their early seventies, and they will, uh, and they're like in like the fourth tier 
to 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 get it. Um, so they're 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 going to be waiting a while. So it's um yeah, you know, same. I mean, I think we've learned some lessons from this. I mean, I mean, I'm someone who on a on a normal um year um, um commutes to work. I'll I'll be on four trains a day, and it's something I'll do in in. in those public places is I'd probably still wear a mask. Why wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. Like, I like I, I, I had like you know it, it, again. If you go by lackadaisical logic, you know, like I had COVID and I'm past yeah. it, so you would think I'd have some level of immunity right now. I do not leave this fucking house without a fucking mask on. Not just for me, but for other people because I don't know. I'm clear of it. No. As far as everybody says, I can do whatever I want, but I don't fucking know. No, so no. I don't do I don't I don't do it just because for myself. I do it for everybody else. And it's so, crazy you, and like social responsibility. What a, what I know it's concept. so simple. It's so <laughs> simple, yet it's so hard for people to grasp. Are you guys like what? What level of like shutdown? Are you guys completely shut down again? Or are you like? Well, in the, in, well, the UK, um, we've gone back back into the into in the into the tears. After coming out a lot, knocked down about. We came out on the like the third or something like that, so we're, we're nearly on to two weeks, um, and it gets reviewed um, every two weeks. So I think it gets reviewed on Tuesday, Wednesday next week um, nationally. But um, where I am, uh, well, where I am isn't a problem, but it's because our entire region gets um, kind of uh, in the in the same umbrella, um, and we're in we're in tier three which is like high risk um but where i am because there's like all these interactive maps you can see how many like how many kind of infections there are in your area where i am there's probably like less than 15 um but because we're lumped in with a, a, a quite a dense um uh, inner city area um which has had it, uh, notoriously always has problems with a lot of these kind of things for for a number of reasons poverty um and um uh, and, 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 and a lot of cultural kind of um, reasons for it as well um so i mean it's just one of those things that happens in inner city areas poor people um probably aren't exposed to um, certain um bits of information and they, they probably live in larger numbers um Lack of education. There's a variety of yeah. reasons for it, and, and that, and so therefore, I mean, but then, I, mean, I said I'm on the outskirts of a, well, I'm just on the edges of a, of a little town, but then, in our little, in our tier, in West Yorkshire, even in the Bradford, in in, a, in the Bradford postcode, zip code, would be um, there's a place called like Burnley and Wharfdale, which is it, it is as posh as it sounds. <laughs> they, they, if you look on the map, there's there's, poten- there's potentially three infections over there because it's it's that's where people with a lot of money live, and they've got big houses and they've got lots of trees and lots of green green space, and there's, they're not uh, so that but their threat threat as much as like inner city Bradford, which is, has a lot of kind of like um, has a lot of problems. So it's just one of those things, but that's what you've got to do. You can't. You just can't allow. You can't. You can't make it even more confusing for people because it's massively confusing for for, for even the more educated members of society to understand what we're supposed to be doing and not supposed to be doing, and what the what's the message that the government's trying to express. Um, so make it as trying to make it as simple as possible, but hopefully we. I mean, uh, uh, America's in the same boat, really. I mean. <laughs> a vaccine is the only way out because because how society works um, and expectations within within our societies, people will just it, well, we it can't stop, and we don't stop. So um, I think I'm frozen. No, you're not. All right, I have but uh, I have on my screen, but no matter. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, so we don't stop. So the only way to get around it is something like that because we've I mean, we've all tried it, haven't we? I mean, I, I've i not moved a hell of a lot out of this this small flat and you live in the middle of nowhere and you still got it. <laughs> so 
Oh yeah, I mean, like if like I like when I actually got it, um, I got several phone calls uh, from people within the company I work for who just How did you basically. Get it at work? Well, I got it. I got it from work, work. And, 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 and several people, you know, I don't work for a huge company, but you know, we have like 60 people there. So it's not a big company, but it's not a small company. And, yeah. and like the, all the phone calls weren't like, I mean, people are like, Hey man, hopefully you're doing well. But it was like, everybody's like, man, like, I can't believe you're the one who fucking got it. Be like, yeah. like, I'm like, I take it way more serious than everybody in our company, like infinitely to the point where like, it was yeah. sad. Like, I, like people would look at me weird. Like, why is he being this cautious? Like, I'm like, and like, they, they wouldn't say that, but they would look at me like that. And I just wanted to fucking rank choke people and be like, you should be <laughs> fucking this cautious. You know what yeah. I mean? And, um, and it, so it sucked. So it is what it is, but you know, I got lucky. You know, and that's the one. And then, honestly, that is by far and away one of the worst things about it. Uh, worst things about, and I'm not going to sit here and say I was, I'm not regretting having it easy, but for all the crazy right wing anti vax fucking crazy COVID is a hoax people, I hate talking to them because when I actually say it wasn't bad for me and it was very mild, they go, see. See, it's just like the fucking flu. Fucking, it's all fucking fake. And I'm like, I'm like, dude, I'm like, dude, uh, can you just, can you be the one who dies from it? Because it just, you know, like, <laughs> you know, like I just, I, you know, I just want uh, it's serious, and I don't want to trivialize it. And it's hard to have that conversation when, when it didn't affect me that way. Because I literally know people who were the opposite end of the spectrum on that. So I was lucky. It's called luck. It has nothing to do with anything but luck. And, yeah, um, yeah. yeah there, I was speaking, um, obviously, because we can't go out for a beer. I'd normally meet a bunch of mates on a Thursday night in my at my little kind of beer shop, which also you can, you can drink in as well. Got a couple of who got like three, three, four beers on, on on tap, but you can. I mean, there's no there's no corkage charge or anything like so it's pretty good value. So we, so, so we move that um, drink online when these times occur um but then somebody else joined us who is an old friend um who works at a brewery actually um and but then out of the five of us on there two had had it re really recently one of them um all, all he did was lost his um sense of smell and taste for like two three weeks and then the other guy had it really bad and um it was in he, he was he, he said i was close to going to hospital I mean, if it got a bit a bit worse, I, I would have gone. And he says he, he feels a, a lasting effect of it. He, he is he is asthmatic. I mean, I, I have a bit of asthma, but it's it's very well managed. But I think he probably suffers a lot more than I do. I mean, that, and that does worry me. Cause I, I, I don't know if I've had it. Uh, early March, I lost my smell, uh, sense of um, smell and taste. But this was before it was classed as a symptom. So I didn't get a test. Yeah. So I've, maybe I had it. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. There's so many. Did you so ever? Did you ever think about getting the antibody test just to see? I've not. No, no. I, I, I've had a test because um, at one point, um, uh, uh, my ex-wife and uh, uh, and me, we both had a bit of a bit of a cough. She was more concerned than me, and we went into to a car park in the middle of Bradford and stuck a swab up his nose. and It was fucking horrible, to be honest. But getting the back of your mouth is the worst one because she's like, <coughs> <laughs> gagging on the... You mean, if you try and touch a cotton, a large cotton swab onto your tonsils, you will start to gag. It's now not I, pleasant. Now in a way, you're divorced. It's, yes. <laughs> Tears streaming down your, um, your face in a car park. And, and <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, yeah. It was. Um, it wasn't pleasant, but um, so I don't know. I might, maybe I've had it. Maybe I haven't. I don't know. Um, well, well, like I said, did they do the... whipped up in? Cause it was early days. It, it yeah, a bit like. Did they like, do the anti? They have to do the antibody test over there, not the COVID test, but the antibody test, right? There's so much up in the air about it. I mean, there's so much, there's so much uncertainty about the whole thing. Oh yeah, it's oh, fine. I, 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 mean, I don't, I don't. I've got no issue with it. It's like, yeah, we're learning day by day, and yeah. we we can all, well, 
we can all act, act responsible, responsibly and that'll make it all a bit easier. Uh, and then, but we also have to get keep things up and running. I mean, where I work, um, there's the we're going through rounds of uh, redundancies because of the lack of because I work at a, I work at a museum, um, and because people, are, um, especially our museum in London, uh, really relies on um, um, overseas tourists, and like no one's flying into London at the moment, so the amount of there, there's has dropped massively in York. We uh, we have a lot of um, tourism from from China and India, and obviously that's not happening at the moment. So um, there's a lot of hopefully I'll be okay. But um, and I was looking for a new job, but maybe not under these circumstances. Um, not um, yes, yeah, so it's all a bit fucking nuts. But um, you got to find a way around it, aren't you? you can't yeah. you kind of feel uh, lockdown has its benefits but it's 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 not like a tried and tested proven um process i mean i think in liverpool who were having it bad about six weeks ago there's this has dropped massively because there were a lot of things put in place but i over over my my way we've been in like essentially we've since march we had about Three weeks of pubs being allowed to be open. Well, I mean, um, lockdown, that was it. Like lockdown, you know, the only reason lockdown exists is because of the asshole who doesn't wear a mask and doesn't believe anything. Like, we wouldn't be locked down if if everybody was on board. Yeah, you wouldn't be locked down. That's it. The only reason all this shit happens, like here in the United States, you know, you have like our Pennsylvania, which is where I used to live, which is like ten miles away from me, got. Just yesterday, they went into lockdown until after New Year, which that basically says no restaurant, no in 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 restaurant eating, no yeah. in restaurant drinking unless it's outdoors. Well, it's fucking December. Yeah. yeah, but um, so everybody, you know, the first words out of every right wing crazy bonkers person's mouth is like, "Fuck the governor of Pennsylvania. Why is he doing this to us?" And and it's just like they don't realize that they're like, no you should be like, fuck the assholes who aren't a team player. Because all these people that get really hot and bothered about all this shit is like the same person that stands up and goes, what about my rights? Be like, you know, I'm, I'm a, I live in a free country. And then I'm like, and then they're like, my grandfather fought for my freedom. And and now you're trying to take it away and be like, your grandfather went to a beach in a different country to die. And you can't wear a fucking mask. Like, that's what it is. You think you're losing your freedom, but you're basically saying, I'm way too soft and fragile enough to even think about think wearing a mask that now, like, like it's such a convoluted, crazy thought process these people have. And it's honestly like, like, I think, uh, like, I wish, you don't, you know, Judge Dredd, the comic book character, Judge Dredd. Yeah. Yeah. He's basically a guy who's a, a, a motorcycle cop who's a judge and he can kill people because he's they're guilty. I wish I was Judge Dredd. I could just kill everybody that was dumb. <laughs> and I and and you laugh, but I'm I'm not joking. I am the <laughs> like, law. I just be I am the law. <laughs> um, fucking. <laughs> I'm maybe thinking of the like, anthrax. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I just wish I could do that and be like, yeah, you're just fucking, you know, like. Uh, be like I, you know, maybe Thanos was on or something. You know what I mean? Like half the population, but you get to choose what half. Yeah. <laughs> like honestly, mean, let's 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 profit. put it there. Let's Bill put it out there. It I well, think <laughs> I think I think you should. Everybody should take two tests: an IQ test and a moral ethical test. And let's let's kill the people that fail in a certain direction. Like if you're just like, yeah, puppies are dumb. I hate garlic, and I think music sucks. Then you. Should, to die because you just, you'll bring nothing to the table. <laughs> okay, I think I'm gonna get a banned off. I'm um, banned on YouTube now, so well, network. no, not monetized anymore. <laughs> yeah. Oh, now I, I have too. to. Mon- oh, that's right, I forgot. Now I have to monetize. I forgot. I have to. I have to monetize now. That sucks. I, I, you know I, what I'm talking about? What monetizing? Do you know why? Like I'm, I'm saying I have to monetize. You know what I'm talking about, right? To? No. Did you get the UK get the email saying that they're going to run ads on videos even if you're not monetizing? Oh, yeah, I heard something about that. But 
I haven't flipped the switch yet, but I, I posted something about it. Like, I'm like, tell me if they're running ads. Because if they start running ads, I'm just going to fuck it. Why would I not? I'm like, you're already fucking making money off me. Like, like if they, I think they did it as in we can do it if we want to, but we probably won't. That's my guess. Yeah. That's why I haven't monetized. But if they start running ads on my channel all the time and I don't monetize, I'll, I'll flip the fucking switch. I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? At that uh, point, it's like, you know. I didn't monetize for, for years because... Um... I found it really irritating, and um, I'm like, oh, I'm not going to fucking make any money out of this. And then it was always, it was always hanging around about forty seven pounds. You got paid at sixty, and so I put it on for a while, and I, um, I got me, I got me one single check from YouTube, like sixty, sixty two pounds. I bought a, bought a pair of jeans. And I've not had one since. <laughs> so I Wait, so, um, so, so you're monetized. Thing. But you have to hit a certain threshold to get money. I I don't get the minutes per uh, minutes viewed per month. To I've oh, got okay. everything else. I've, I've got the subs and all that kind of business. But um, yeah, I just don't get the minutes per month because I need to have a I need a I need a video of the perfect draft system. It appears um, to to bring in those to bring in those views. Oh, like the world's strongest beer or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, but that's it. I mean, I don't. I, it's not the reasons why I do this whole bullshit anyway in the first place. I mean, Ross actually asks, he's like, do you make different amount of money from premium YouTube users versus free users? I have no idea. No oh, idea. He's talking about, like, like I guess paid YouTube users, but I think I think that's the difference. I think I think when you pay for YouTube, you don't see the ad, so part of that money probably goes to something, uh, maybe Ooh. a pool that gets, you know what I mean? That's the whole point of, pay, of paying for YouTube. You have a premium, um, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah, being yeah. tempted just to not get the fucking adverts, like popping up every like. Oh, three I, and a half I don't. It's on like a long video. I have my, I have all my, I, I don't watch ads. I have everything jerry rigged. I'll tell you how to do it. <laughs> Please. Do. Yeah, you download it. Yeah, you download fucking on my phone, my tablet, everything. I have, I have, I have um the plugins. That yeah, let me know. Sk- let yeah. me know. Yeah, yeah. I don't watch ads. I, everything plays in the background. No ads. And that's and if that was the case, then I'd be like, "Fuck it, I'll flip the switch" because everybody does it. But like most people don't do that shit. So. Yeah. Well, I, why? I mean, exactly in that situation, why not? I mean, if you if you if you fit the criteria, let it let it do what it does. But um, for me, it's, the, there's a, there's a I don't know if you see it in America. I mean, there's a bunch of people in the UK who've become a little bit obsessed with the, the concept of getting a bit of cash out of this. Oh yeah. And for me, it's never been about that. It's all a bit, always been about uh, about community. Yeah. Um. Hence, I mean, I've been I've been I've been on craft beer channels stream tonight and finish that and and they're like, oh Matt's oh Matt's on that. Oh, I'll be on for an hour, half an hour to. Uh, oh, that's right. Craft beer channel did oh, thing fun. tonight, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I was a I was a guest. Oh, were me, you? Nice. Me, Simon, me, Simon, and Ollie from uh, Pint Size were um, were guests, beer tube guests, which is nice. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, it, it's it's actually still on. It, it just, that's what's illuminated my face. Is, so you uh, left them to come to me. See, that's how I roll. Yeah, fuck I those thought, UK guys. You know, the, the king of UK beer tubes. Like, fuck this place. I'm going over <laughs> to this guy's thing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so um yeah. But you I mean yeah, so but but that's their full time full time job kind of. I mean uh, Johnny does a bit of consultancy work, Brad's a graphic designer. So they yeah. do the other bits and bats. Yeah, and, and they're... yeah, they they get I mean they do I think they make a lot of their money out of well, what s- sustains them on, on, on Patreon. But their but their content is high quality. I mean it's not just some fucking um some numpty on us. It's not us. <laughs> this bullshit. <laughs> We're not sitting here. Oh no, I'm for joking. For me, I, I'm. A, I'm. A, I mean, but I'm. A, it's a. It's a hobby. It's an. It's. It's. Um. It's a pastime. I mean, some weeks I'll post like five times. Some weeks I'll be busy. Like this week, I've been crazy busy with work, so I put up two, and that's fine. I don't feel like I've got to chase uh, the perception of making a bit of money out of it because I think. I prefer to be um, for me credibility. Oh is, yeah, is, is that's a, a big one. I mean, that, I mean exactly. That's and that's uh, that's why I'm. I, I like you because I mean I think that's uh, I think that's that's why you're popular 
as well because I think people really trust what you're saying. Um, and for me, I mean, I could sniff them out and go like, oh, fuck them, fuck those guys. Um, but then I, I think it seems like a lot of people don't, which is kind of sad, but I prefer to be the... Um, I prefer to be the the cool band who who who, who does a show in front of 150 people opposed to the, the, sign out um, an arena. So that's 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 just me. <laughs> there's a cool there's a cool kind of arc to it um, because, like, let's say if you it doesn't matter what it is in YouTube, it could, you could be fucking drinking beer or unwrapping presents or fucking video games, whatever. It doesn't matter. It, it you know. It, the chances of you doing it in becoming have it become some sort of like living is very very small it's much much higher in 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 like tech review and like fucking like video games and like shit like that like obviously that has a higher chance of success but almost universally across the board unless it, you have a ton of money and understanding about a production and commercial commercial uh, appeal and and really tailor it to a specific subject and know what you're like you basically have a have the, a film and production background and enough money to really do what you need to do if you're going to make a channel that's be, going to become popular to the point where you can make money it's going to take time and that's probably yeah. the best equalizer is that everybody who starts the beer channel who thinks they're going to make money doing the beer channel if you you're never going to make money doing the beer channel, but let's say you somebody did break through, it's not somebody that's going to do it for two months, and no. that person is most likely just going to give up and go, okay, I that's not going to work. I'll move on to something else. It's like in, well, I don't know about uh, about in the US, but you know, I said I think Johnny and Brad kind of do to a certain degree, probably supplemented in a certain way. I think at the moment, uh, I think Simon's doing oh better than he's ever done. Uh, I, I'd be I'd be pleasantly surprised the amount of money he makes off of off of YouTube and super chats. Well, let me ask you this though, and this but, and this is honestly, and let me ask you this though, and this is honest because I've honestly like I've never really watched a lot of um uh, of some no. stuff. Does he is he is does he say negative things? No, not really. Um, but uh, but then but. but but I guess the thing for me with him would be uh, the physical toll that it takes on him, because um, he's got to, he's got to, he's got to generate content, and his content is either eating shit food or drinking loads of beer. I mean, I'm not, I'm not the healthiest man in the world ever, mm-hmm. but I don't feel like I need to post three beer reviews a day and uh, a review of a. Like a store bought pizza and some. I mean, it, because it'll, it'll no, I get, no. It, I mean, his volume, his volume is impressive. I mean, if you, you exactly. could take what you want if, away from, you could take what you what you want from his content, whether you enjoy it or not. You can't yeah. deny the fact the volume he outputs. Yeah. In, it, 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 yeah, yeah, he does. Yeah, it's just one of those things, and so, uh, and he, I mean, and that he was always. Um, Really fucking adamant that he was, he was going to make it work, and right now I think he, you'd be surprised. How, you might be like, "Well, for for a, for a, for a beer YouTuber, that's actually not that bad amount of money, considering that's pretty much all you do." Uh, but he's, he's not he's not like KSI or something. He's not Logan Paul. <laughs> I mean, he's not that yeah. kind of money. But um, I just won't want it. I won't want that. I mean, in a- any walk of life, you mean. I mean, as a graphic designer, whenever anybody asks me to like do a, like a birthday card, it's like, oh fuck, a wedding invitation. The last thing you want to do in your personal time is the stuff what you do oh, in your day and, job. And, and and to flip the script for something like this, if you do it opposite, is take the thing you love and then yeah. wrap it around a bow that isn't flattering. Like he, if you take the thing that you love and then it becomes a job to the point where you are like, I don't want to do it, man. Like I, I love doing this. I don't want to have to have to do it. I want to want to do it. And there's yeah. a very thin line and I've done that professionally. I've, I've moved into that territory to where there's some things that I, I enjoy doing and I have to do them professionally now. And I'm like, now it's just like, fuck, this fucking sucks. And I don't want to do this. 
and it sucks with the beer thing. But then again, if someone gave me a ton of money, I'd do it, take it. But um, you know, but it's not gonna happen. And, but, so, what I mean, in that sense, how long could you fake it for? It, I think you've got to then diversify, like 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 what Johnny and Brad do. That it's yeah. it's um it's video journalism. I guess what they do, in, mm. doing the kind of beer beer reviews. Well, um, the old, uh, I mean, the I perfect I think world. Eventually, you just get really burnt out and jaded and like, oh, fuck this shit. It, people well, just, will just see through. <laughs> that you just don't do yeah, no, no, anymore. no. And honestly, what they do, and I like, I, I, I watch their stuff. I don't watch a ton of it because it's obviously it's a lot of UK based stuff, but they bring a lot of stuff to the table. And especially, you know, when they made the trip over here in the summer in the US, I was like, oh, yep. it's very, really interesting. But they are very much. You know, po everything's positive. I don't think everything yeah. should be positive, but everything's positive. Um, yeah. I think the uh, like in a perfect world, like let's say somebody were to, you know, somebody were to make it um, and make some kind of living off of this. But and you're saying, at what point does it do you burn out? Yeah. It would have to be like a, a, a Howard Stern situation to where you were yourself so much. To where they hired you just to be yourself. It wouldn't it, like your personality and you being you is actually the reason. Do you know what I mean? So it's like whether you say "fuck you," curses doesn't matter what you fucking do. That then it's still good. That would be the great thing because then you could still be ah fuck this. This sucks. Fuck you, asshole. F go fuck yourself. And then it's like you still get paid. It's yeah. not like okay, we want you to do this thing, but you could only say these five words. And you got to yeah. make sure you you do these five things. Like it's like kind of like um, like like a lot of times, like um, uh, the one guy um Thomas um the one of the Thomas Dutch Thomas, and yeah. uh, he was talking about like the untapped reach out to to um to the Dutch guys about a festival they're doing out that way, and and he started to talk about that experience, and and like they were like yeah we'll send you some beer blah 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 blah. I'm like wait a minute wait a minute. I'm like, did they say, hey, we're having a we're having a festival? Here's some beers. If you want to talk about it, great. I'm like, or did they say, hey, we're having a festival, we'll send you some beer, but you have to say these five things on Instagram. You have to post this hashtag nine times. And then you have to make sure that you film at least three videos of this, this, and this. And he's like, no, that's what they said. I'm like, yeah, I would never do that. Because that's the shit. It's like, it's like if you were like, hey, here's some beer review it have fun with it if not okay fine but if they're like i've had breweries reach out to me and be like hey we'll send you some beer but you have to make at least four posts on instagram and you have to use this hashtag and you have to say really? nice things but yeah i've I had that happen and i'm like yeah you can i've go never had that. that i've never had that and actually i'm expecting something in early next week from a, 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 I think I think there must be there might be a Chinese brewery, but I don't think I don't know what it is. Maybe the the origin origins of it is Chinese. I think the people involved in it aren't Chinese, and it's actually been brewed up in Scotland. Um, but I mean, I know the person who was um, who's doing all the press and marketing for it. So we're like, oh, are you interested in this? Yeah, I'll have a go on that. And, um, and so, but that was the same. All they said was, don't say anything before. Um, before we announce it on at nine oh, yeah, o'clock on yeah, Monday that's morning, that's, yeah, that's but fine. I've never had anything that has said uh, any expectations. I, if if I've ever, uh, I've often said that to people, and when they've made kind of like a uh, when they've contacted me, like, well, I, I, I'll I can do I'll do this and this and this, just because it's like I, it's courtesy. I mean, yeah. if you're going to send me some some free shit, then um, I'll and, and it, as long as it's up to standard. I, yes, actually, always I always, I always, I always give the opposite. I say, I'm like, yeah, and I have literally a, co I, a thing I copy and paste every time <laughs> that says, just so you know, I might say horrible shit. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, you could send stuff. I'm like, but I'm just going to, whatever comes out of my mouth comes out of my mouth. And I'm like, it's not me trying to be an asshole, but I just yeah. want you to know that beforehand. So yeah, that way, if I say, ah, oh, it's okay, whatever, I don't care that you don't go, what the fuck, man? Be like, because I'm, and, and, you know, it is what it is. I'm like, and it's not like me, like being like, yeah, I want to be a dick to you, but it's like I, that. That's that's my absolution of my moral and ethical core. To once, yeah. if I send that, so when I'm reviewing it, then I it, I don't feel like I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, someone sent me something, and then I'm like, no, I said it. I'm like, I'm just gonna say whatever the fuck I'm gonna say. I already said it, and they were like, cool with it, and then they sent it. 
So obviously they're doubly cool with it because they if they weren't cool with it, they could say, yeah, we'll send you shit and then just never send it. But if they say, yeah, we're going to send you shit and then, and, then, and then send you stuff and they already read the prerequisite and I'm like, I'm absolved. I could say whatever I want. Yes. Yeah. But, but if you didn't, if you weren't kind of like true to your kind of like uh, ethics and stuff, then you, then you're you're done, aren't you? Really? You well, know, in that you, sense, you, you, your 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 words are tainted. Then. Well, not just that, and it, not just that from a viewer standpoint, but from <clears> brewers. <throat> I actually think more brewers talk to me and reach out to me because I'm not sugarcoat. Everything's fucking fantastic all the time, guy. You know what I mean? Like brewers actually yeah. like they're like, yeah, I kind of enjoy that. A, lot, a bunch think I'm a, an asshole, but at the same time, you know, can't please they're... everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of pleasing everyone, what's going on, Craig? <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, I try to. But, uh, no, I um, I just cracked open a lager. It's nothing great, but it, it's it's okay. It's nothing oh, crazy. Overworked. Overworked. Is the name oh, of the game? Thing. Brew dogs. So it's an oh, it's, oh, it's it's a uh, brew dogs like spin off kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. It, well, oh, okay. yeah, the human well, it's um, it's, sour it's fermentation, um, fermentation arm, basically. Yeah. So it's, yeah, a, it's, it's like a, a like a mixed sour. Yeah. 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 yeah well, it, it, I mean, it says wood aged lager, but then th there's not really much else, you know. So beach wood aged, like Budweiser, maybe. I can't really say. I mean, I haven't gone into. Uh, there's nothing on the untapped commercial description. There's nothing really on the bottle, so I don't get that. So the rustic lager like from the rustic lager from uh, uh, Benny Sky was lovely. Yeah, yeah, I've heard about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, um, Overworks is humongous. I mean, uh, are you, uh, uh, um, link that Harry shared um, last week I think, was um, James Watt talking about like things that he kind of like. I don't say regrets, but kind of like questions what they've done in the past and that was making overwork such a big thing it is massive it was it was i don't know if he, i don't know if he's still involved but the guy who they had um who set up was yeah, i think he was hebrew or um uh wicked weed pre just before they got bought out and he, he essentially was brought in to set up overworks which was i mean brew dog's fucking huge yeah facility and and overworks is I don't say it's as big as the main brewery, but it was big. essentially James's thoughts were, yeah, we, we, we banked too much on this being a, a, a real kind of like big part of the market. But it, it isn't, it's quite small. It's still quite small. Yeah. But, no. but yeah, no, it was, it was an interesting article actually. Seeing kind of like him saying, well, not every, everything we touch turns to gold. <laughs> some of it is fucking dumb shit. I'm genuinely surprised about how aggressive they are. They're still in like the beer market in general, because it's I I like literally no no one in a minute. whoever buys their beer. Yeah, yeah, no, it's brew dog. Yeah, people are like, oh you know like brew dog. It's like nah. it's okay. The pale stuff over here isn't. Compared to other breweries, nowhere near. Um, yeah. Some of their dark stuff is really good. Still, the barrel aged yeah. stuff. And yeah, that's that. where they're that's where they're at. I yeah, that was probably Not some of the best stuff. Best stuff I've had from it has been like with the the Isle series, the older yeah. Isle series, the Isle <laughs> Jura and stuff like that, and and like some of those older beers are pretty good. But they're even like even then they were like they were still mild. They were like kind of like you know like. Um, like uh, yeah. like their dark beers always remind me of like um, what's that fucking brewery? Who's the, Harvinson's Ola Dub? Like it remind a lot of their o o oh, darker stuff. Yeah, yeah it remind yeah. me of the, the Ola Dubs to where they're fun, but they're so meek and mild compared to even beer eight eight years ago, like dark beer eight years ago. But they're fun. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it was weird. That's uh, a really old Ola Dub. I remember one one uh, one um, specific occasion in, in Manchester. They um, so they were like, uh, well, they used this thing called, uh, called a twist up. So it was people who knew each other in a beery sense on on Twitter, and we kind of met up. The, um, the second one was in Manchester, and somehow they wangled a, um, a cask of Oladu Forty, 
um, and that was you know that was quite a quite a thing. Yeah, it's it's a it's a. It, I think if you want to uh, understand what Ola do is, um, Zach did a Zach Avery did a video years ago, and went through like the like the full range, and um, yeah, it's it's kind of lower ABV, and but I think. For what it is, I think it's actually quite a well, quite a well done beer. I mean, yeah. Not every, and I don't think. Every, I mean, if you can do things to a high quality, at like eight point five or something, that maybe what it is, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, if you can do that and impart some really interesting barrel <laughs> barrel character and a load of complexity, um, does it need to be twelve percent? Because I've had lots of twelve percent as that. Kind of aren't as kind of skillfully done or something like that. So the weird part about the Ola Dubs is that I've actually I've typically enjoyed the younger versions rather than the older versions. Mm. Like the young, like the younger, like you know, 10, 12 year versus the yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Twenty. It Thirty seems like the years. younger are better, and it, which is defies logic to a certain extent. But um, yeah, but it's been years since I've done. I mean, last time I had Ola Dubs probably like six years ago. Um, but then but, it's, it, it, then it, then does it become about kind of like um, expectations of the drinker? Are we then conditioned yeah. to think um, is uh, yeah? We uh, they were on Thursday night chatting with some mates. They were like they were getting slightly fucking frost, getting slightly <laughs> rambunctious in our uh, opinions of um, oh well, oh, nothing, no lagers get any good um, kind of rating. It was about ratings, like. Rate beer and on, yeah. now on tap, which is like how you use them and stuff. And, um, but for me, it's like, yeah, if Augustina is like a 69 on, sorry, I don't know why that number pops a fucking <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> on, on, on rate beer. What are you watching? It's, 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 well, there you go. It's probably better than the nondescript German lager that's got a. Fourteen. I mean, it's it's a rough indication on where where a general consensus goes because we're not the only ones who've got a, an, a like an impassioned interest in beer. So if there's a group of those people and they say, "Oh well, I think this is better than that," there's a chance that it, you you're kind of heading in the right direction. Um, it's it's but I understand it's like when when it's like 150 to 300. Ratings on rate beer. How responsible is that? And it's like, well, is is it just a load of fucking mates or locals hyping up their favorite, their local brewery, unjustifiably yeah. and stuff? So I understand <clears throat> that, but you kind of you need a like because there's so much stuff. You need a you need a you need some way of navigating the. When 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 things are expensive, expensive, it's like well. And my mate, sorry to go on. Um, my mate um, posted something earlier, and I've been ranting on on Thursday night with him about how expensive Verdant is at the moment. Mm. They've just done a West Coast IPA. It's eight um, percent. It's retailing at seven seven pound twenty nine. I'm like, how the fuck can you do yeah. that? And I, I've, I had a Polly's, yeah. which was which was four not yeah per can. Yeah, that's here. Yeah, uh, yeah. and yeah. Uh, and I had a Polly's, which was a, a, a double IPA, eight point five, and it was it was four ninety nine. It's like how how can you justify that? Yeah. So what am I? It. It's like what am I paying it. for? What am I, am I paying for your your kind of like ill advised expansion? What well, I, no, I, I think it's, something? but they, I think it's, I think it's has a lot to do with just because you, you won't pay for it, but the beer has gone so white collar that I yeah. think, you know what I mean? Like there's people well, with a lot fun. of disposable income that yeah. have no qualms yeah. paying 30 bucks for a four pack, you know what yeah. and I mean? I, I think that's it, man. Cause it's like, mm. I see that over here. Equilibrium has gotten insane over here. Like to the point where, like on retail, like because they started, you know, with COVID, they started like selling their beer to shops to sell because they just don't have, you know, they expanded the and they have the yeah, yeah. like a, yeah. a four pack, a four pack of a double IPA from Equilibrium at a shop off the shelf is thirty bucks American. 
Mm. Mm. We, we got they're, all they're, we they're, got they're, their five percent pale ale off a shelf uh, around here is now twenty dollars American. It was twelve dollars at the brewery. Yeah. Wow. Nuts. Loads yeah, it's, it's loads. Yeah. See yeah. everywhere. Like that. The um. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, because um, track. Well, I love track. I'd say they're probably making some of the best IPA in the world. To be honest, I think they're incredible. Especially in UK, I think the shining stars of the UK at the moment. They put out. They put out two new beers on Thursday. They only do I mean four packs, and the four pack of their of a new pale ale, which I think was five percent, was eighteen pounds, which is it's enough, yeah, yeah. For a, so it's comparable, isn't it? Basically, say mm. comparable breweries. I mean, track a lot more, a lot smaller than Equilibrium, but I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, it's fucking nuts. I mean, and as much as I wanted, I wanted, I and I wanted some track for for Christmas Day. So I mean, I think they're great, but I, I don't want to feel like I've got to buy four four cans of a beer that I've never had as well. This yeah. is something then, I love. Like, yeah, I'll get more. But, you, but you our crappy like, scene like, isn't about packs either. You look at Alchemist. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, not only are they ma- still making crazy amounts of their old beers you know whether it be heady or focal banger and all those kind of beers yeah. they're making new beers they're trying different things um maybe they're not as cutting edge or cool but they're doing all these kind of crazy hot beers no matter like no matter what the beer is at alchemist every single one of the beer they ever make is 13 dollars 99 cents the brewery for a four pack for a four pack doesn't matter yeah. what it is could be a five percent fucking pale ale. It could be a double IPA. It doesn't matter. Stout, imperial stout, whatever. Give us thirteen dollars. You leave with beer. And well, they not he's only he's do they principled though, isn't it? But uh, not only. He's but here's the it. thing. And you can say, okay, they're principled. But not only does he do does he do that. He contributes a crazy amount of charity. He employs a bunch of people. Gives them great benefits. Just pays them really well. None. You know what I mean. So it's not like. It's not like these other brewers are like, we have to do this in order to keep up with the trends because we need to have, you know, the amount of hops we put in the beer. And, you know, what we do is just worth it and be like, well, then how does he do it? So yeah. who's wrong? You know what I mean? Like, who's wrong? Like, is he wrong? I would yeah, rather, exactly. how is he doing it and making a profit? Not just making yeah. profit, but contributing to charity, employing a bunch of people, treating yeah. them fantastically. So it, it it's one of those things because I don't know how it is with like, I I, I I do know how it is. Like Verdant, all those like like you're telling me you're charging uh, you know thirty bucks a four pack for Verdant. When's the last yeah. time you saw the the uh, the owners of Verdant brew and not be on a road trip to s- visit every brewery in the United States, yeah, and everywhere else in the world? Like how much does that cost to like fly to every city every week? To hang out yeah. and do nothing but hang out and have fun. I mean, like, I like, you're, I, like I literally, like that's called embezzlement, blah, 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 man. He's always on the fucking. He, he, he always yeah. seemed like Paul was in some wonderful location having a great, great time. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not I mean, I like Paul. I, I like Paul's person, but yeah, it's crazy. It seems like yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I don't understand <laughs> the reasons behind it, but yeah, it does. On the fucking lash. Just... Yeah, you kind of like you do think, uh, yeah. But then you think about it, like if they're going to justify it, you have these breweries that like be like, "Well, we're doing collabs." Be like, you know, you literally know the collab is is them someone making a recipe and agreeing on it, and somebody yeah. else brews it, and then those dudes fly in and take a picture and leave. Like yeah, that's the collab. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they didn't have to go guys. there. They yeah. literally didn't have to go there at all in any form or fashion, but they do, yeah. and they hang Too out and have fun. Collabs these days. Actually, yeah. I, I think I felt like that's been a, a bonus of COVID. As less collabs. <laughs> yeah. Every beer seems to be a collaboration. Used to be a, a, like a, a it's crazy a, a point of re, a, a point of um, excitement. It's like it's like getting a beer that is wasn't a collab about a year ago it was a, a rarity really. Mm. Like it yeah. just becomes it becomes nothing then, doesn't it? It's, yeah, it's it's a couple of emails or you rock up and you you take some 
fun pictures for an Instagram story. Call me cynical. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, yeah. It, doesn't, it doesn't sit well with me, that kind of shit. Yeah. No, no. No, it's bullshit. The one collab that's going, that's starting over here, and by starting, I mean it's like the Hot Butcher is doing it, and I kind of like it. Is they're doing the same exact thing, but what they're doing is they're collabing with a brewery, like recipe wise, yeah. and instead of, because typically what happened with collabs um, here in the states and probably even overseas is that they would collab on a recipe, the two breweries would make a beer together at one brewery they would make that collab and then several months would go by and then the two breweries would make another collab and then they would release it in the other brewery what hot butcher is doing is like two breweries are making the collab they brew on their system and the other brewery brews it on their system and they release yep. it the same exact time you know what i mean yeah, it's not like the, it's the, you know what i mean fast, yeah. yeah so i i like that <laughs> version a cool. much better because not only it, because it's cooler because you're gonna get a different beer it's yeah. two different systems so it's not yeah. gonna be the same yeah. beer but if you stick Massive to a decent difference. yeah 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 so if you stick to a Absolutely. like relatively decent recipe or kind of a, a strict kind of uniform recipe and you're gonna get two different beers and it's gonna be fun to kind of do this thing side by side and it's it's not me flying to your place to take a picture and hang out and, and then you flying to my place to take a picture and hang out when we actually don't do anything because it's like literally like i've seen so many collabs it's like literally the people that are in the pictures and talking about the collab they never even touch i no. don't see them touch any equipment it's they just hang out well, and eat food yeah, and get, get shitty and get go in, and be like okay let's go hang out and party that's and it it's, that's it's what it's all about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just an excuse, almost. <laughs> yeah. I mean, one thing that I, I have heard from kind of brewers, I mean, sharing of knowledge. Um, there's a bit of, um, and there's also a bit of, like, kind of standing on the sh shoulders of giants as well. It's, uh, it's, there's a political element, isn't there? It's like, it is, it is beneficial for me to be doing a collab with uh, Oh, Take yeah. it, UK brewery. It is benefit, and I and we specify we specialize in New England style IPA. It does me a lot of good to get a collab done with other half. Oh yeah, that will my sales will go through the roof. And we always do. Daya does one, Ferdinand does one, yeah. whoever, yeah. Cloudwater does one. It goes through. It, people are fucking banging down the doors. It, does it make that much of a difference? It's so funny. Maybe that's flipped. Do it's do flipped. they then make make? better be a, as a result because they're working with someone who's got a reputation for making something of a high quality there's a potential for that i guess but it depends how it depends on the people involved really it, I mean, it's interesting because like, over here it's flipped because it used to be everybody tried to make a, a, a beer with other half and they would a lot of people ended up doing that and it would be like oh they made a beer with other half I have to buy it now it's like okay other half made a beer with this weird boutique brewery in the middle of nowhere oh i gotta get that one because it's this weird brewery that i never heard of it's like almost flipped the script to the opposite end of the spectrum yeah to where it's like even though other half is still great and weirdly enough we just started getting other half kind of semi-distributed um, here in New Jersey, to where you can actually get their stuff, which is kind of weird. But we yeah. we got one over here, like, like yesterday. Well, you guys get <laughs> shit over there all the Fucking... time. That's the thing. You get stuff that <laughs> yeah, I can't. It's, not even that here. It's, yeah. it's a bit old. It's the Green Green City IPA, no. which is yeah. probably oh. like two, three months old. <laughs> well, Did you buy expensive. it? Yeah, yeah, I've got it in the fridge. <laughs> so, don't I've poop on it. You bought it. <laughs> well, if it is. It, well, yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, we'll see. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, grab a bathroom break for a Go minute. For you guys hold hold the fort there. Cool. It's all right. We're gonna we're gonna destroy his channel. <laughs> um, I see you giving little <laughs> see you giving little digs to Simon earlier. Did you, uh, yeah, did you enjoy that? Just little. I think he, I think he deserved it. Yeah, I, I did. Pick up <laughs> it was quite amusing. Well, oh, you, know, you know, you know it is. Tony was brilliant. Tony was brilliant. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, uh, yeah, and all um, live streams don't they all involve? Um, <laughs> yeah, they're not used to them, taking, are, your, like. taking your top off and doing press ups. Oh, it yeah. is what they're, it not is, used, isn't it? they're not used to them, are they? They're just uh, it should have been a bit longer. I think an hour would have been all right. Yeah, no, I think I think they probably, yeah. Uh, no, Brad was pretty pissed by the end of it, so oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, so maybe I think they probably I mean, they moved it along and they stuck to being 
we were all given times and stuff. Yeah. And they fucking nailed it all. We were a little bit late bringing yeah. Simon on, like three minutes, but everything else was. I mean, they tried to get to where they were. I think they just ended up chatting. But um, they got the they got the cheese guy off at the right time in order to get us us in and stuff. You mean yeah, Johnny? He, he kind of he, he even though he's drinking, he's he's Still moving it around and making all the pieces kind of fit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was good fucking sure. like, oh, How can you compete with Ollie though? Fucking <laughs> with his Chris. His hat. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Jesus Christ. That's good. Oh, he's brilliant. He can't even know you. He, 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 he's wonderful, isn't he? He is good. Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I noticed that it was kind of going against the tide of what Simon done yesterday about, oh, it doesn't feel right for me to travel and all this. There's a little under kind of thing there, I thought. <laughs> and that made me chuckle. <sighs> so. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it was it, it was all it, yeah it was good it was good but yeah fucking hell all yeah. with his like tray of shit food and his <laughs> my, 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 if you didn't see it so Ollie, Ollie from Pint Sized um, but, uh, the three of us on Craft Beer Channel was me Simon and Ollie from Pint Sized and um, we all got introduced in order which I didn't like the hierarchy thing very much um, so introduce Simon chat with him for a minute Introduce me, chat, chat to me for a minute. Introduce Ollie. And Ollie's got this ridiculous fucking Christmas helmet thing on. It's like a Chris, it's like a fucking soft Christmas tree with his face part, like pointed out like a balaclava. Glasses. And these like ridiculous like orange uh, novelty glasses on and stuff. It's like, yeah, <laughs> you can't compete with that. Just his, his, his madness. <laughs> Good. It reflects it well, yeah. though. It reflects his channel well. Absolutely. Yeah, but that's what you get in it. I mean, yeah. That ridiculous fucking. What was it using? Like in some Disney film where he like cut. <laughs> his video is like 12 minutes long, and um, eight minutes of it is this kind of Disney song that he's singing. <laughs> like with like bad, like the badly superimposed faces on on stuff. It's genius. You need that. You need you need a bit of variety, don't you? You can't be just all like po faced middle aged men. <laughs> Grumbling. <That's good. laughs> it lightens it a little bit. Yeah. yeah, you need a bit of variety, don't you? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> not, not too serious, just yeah. Well I've just time a place for everything, isn't there really? Yeah. Yeah, it's good. That's good it was a good little watch. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, all BeerTube live streams about five hours long. I think they could do get away with like two and a half hours. We we clocked off at two two in the morning yesterday. Really? Yeah, well, it was Jake, it's Jake's birthday on Sunday, and um, so we all had a drink last night, and we all kind of like, oh shit, it's two o'clock. I think we should go to bed. But it was it was fun. You left before us. Yeah, I did. But you, were you were much longer afterwards. Um, I left too. Something like yeah, quarter of an hour, twenty minutes. I, yeah, then I went that finished, and then I went to uh, nerve senses. Okay. Was it nerve senses? I can't oh, remember for for a yeah, half hour last night. Yeah. yeah, about half hour or so. That, that's good fun. Then Craig is the most. Um, he's like the the most often seen. Yeah, he's Beer tube. He's nim- nimble. Kind of like he's all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> nimble. I like that. Nimble. The nimble Craig Samuel. Wherever, <laughs> yeah. wherever yeah. you are in the world, Life stream he more. might pop up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes with a hat, sometimes not. <laughs> sometimes depends. <laughs> Inf- infiltrate all the. You're on some fucking weird ones, aren't you? I mean, I understand all the like, yeah, like nerd sense and which ones, Canadians and stuff. What's, but don't you, don't you end up on some some random ones, don't you? What ones? Some, some, some. I don't know. You, sometimes people post. Craig's calling you. Like, he's like, "Tell me, motherfucker, which ones are weird?" Sometimes people post these like th- these um, clips of streams. I'm like, "What? Who the fuck is that?" Uh, I'm Can't not remember. on the day. I mean, weekends, yeah, Friday, Saturday nights, I'll do a few, but I don't do any during the week generally now. Yeah. I will, I will concur. Yeah. I will concur, though. 
um, or Rob, be like, if someone's doing a live stream, be like, let's see who's going to join. If you pop up, I'm like, yeah, sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm normally in the chat, at least. So. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, well, no, I, 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 Paul's the king of the chat. Paul's a, he just randomly yeah. shows up and train wrecks a chat. Oh, yeah. Get the best absolutely. of them. Yeah. Yeah. We had a we had a lovely one a couple of Sundays back. We just I think everybody was just a bit like I mean I very much was. Everybody said and Paul started up a Paul started up a stream and then really gradually good. people jumped on and it was it was really nice. It kind of like felt like people kind of like need maybe the I I mean I felt maybe I felt like I needed it. Um it, I really appreciated being communicating with people that day. It was a nice um, it, was really, it was really nice. I mean, Paul's always a, he's always a yeah. <laughs> out. I'm, I'm very <laughs> was, rarely on, short of a word. I think it was, for me, it was a time of day. I'm very rarely on a stream yeah, in like, mid afternoon. Sometimes it's that kind of like regularity. I mean, sometimes it becomes a bit tiresome, I think, and people then don't happen to be available oddly. It's like, oh, well, if we do it every. Every third Thursday, some part, sometimes people just don't. People kind of rail against it. I think sometimes. Oddly, I think Joe D seems to have just got his crew and they they just do it on a on a on a on a Saturday. But I really enjoyed when I, I, I went that time I went on Joe D's. And, um, it was great. I mean, I've always been massively nervous about doing it, and then he was like, hey, and, he, and he was super cool. Oh, he's- <laughs> He's, he's, a, he's, he's a great, he's a nice bloke. Great yeah, character. Yeah, a little, really friendly guy. Great character. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> so, okay, let's, get... go, let's, uh, let's go through some comments because I feel like Perfect. I'm neglecting a bunch of people. Neglect. here Because that's what I do. Um, <laughs> I, I, uh, Matt's talking about doing a legacy. He's doing a, um, a non-alcoholic IPA. Listen, I actually enjoy non-alcoholic beers. Do you guys fuck with those at all? No. Like, I actually... I actually like no. them. I've got um, that Brooklyn thing down in the fridge. I can't yeah. remember what it's called. We have a couple of breweries over here that do some fun ones. And like, if I'm going to like sit around and like play video games and do what I want to sit around for a long night of drinking, like I'll like switch out to like an alcoholic beer every now and then, yeah. just so I don't get super shitty. Um, yeah, special so. effects. <laughs> yeah. That's what I've got. Special yeah. effects down in the fridge. Oh yeah, I have, that, I have that in my fridge right now too from Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah. 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 I've had some and, crazy uh, non-alcoholic stuff from Omnipolo, which were quite entertaining. <laughs> a lot I'm of just, the, I was bothered. A I lot of the water. German breweries. <laughs> that's why you're the king of UK beer tube. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's like uh, yeah, like uh, a lot of the German breweries do really good stuff, like Big Burger and stuff like that. Do good non-alcoholic stuff, but I'll definitely try it. Uh, Hatchman will actually say, "Where are we going to get a?" Um, Best of Shelfie's list this year. Always. Shelfie's list is one of my favorite lists. We talked about that. Now, Zach here talks about um, Love and Bottle Age beers, and he has five Long of Tooth breweries. They're from Surly and De Proof. They did a collab years ago. Um, and he actually contacted me back in 2014 trying to find some, and I think I directed him in the right direction. He says he got a bunch of them. He said they are um, they are for his wedding, and if they're amazing, he's going to send me a bottle. I review that beer. You can go look at it in my channel, but I'd love to review it again, especially with several years on it. Um, so that would be fun. So cheers, man. Um, yeah, this guy said, what's up? So, <laughs> Fuck that guy. Yeah. That's, how old, no, that's, how old, that's how old the comments are. Oh, <laughs> Craig's been in here for an hour. And, uh, <laughs> um, and Ross was talking about how like uh, YouTubers make money from premium, and he actually ends up saying, "Yeah, well, I pay for YouTube premium, so I never see ads," and that's pretty much it. Um, you know, if you pay for YouTube premium, you're just not seeing ads. And I think just a a, a shekel or two from that payment goes to oh, provider. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jordan from Pittsburgh. He works for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Um, he offered me to come hang out and actually watch a game and drink some beers, and we're cool. gonna do that eventually. Uh, he says, cool. There is a potential, f- he's like, Is there a, any potential for an old uh, concern with an old can of beer? Like, because I did the review of this one, which is like a five year old barley wine in a can. Um, uh, honestly, I think we don't know because exactly. everybody can say it's this, it's this, it's that, it's this, exactly. it's that. Oh, it's fine, yeah. it's not. Fine. 
but we don't fucking know. No one's ever fucking did it. Um, I'm sure yeah. there's a 10 year old can of 10 fitty out there somewhere that we could test. Um, but this is the yeah. oldest one I've done. And honestly, I didn't, I thought it held up oxidation wise better than a bottle. Yeah. Now that could, the seal on this hypothetically is going to be better than a cap. It, it, just the way caps are applied. But you also yeah. have to understand bottles are filled to a certain extent. They never go all the way to the top and they're capped. So you have that negative oxygen that's left. With with almost cans, they actually let them get to the point where they overflow and the can and the top slide on top. So there's a real Not there's so. way less less space left in the can. You know. Yeah, so we'll yeah. see what's what. But seal, I, I, so, yeah. Yes, yeah, so I don't I don't think we know, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Yeah, it was you see and and <clears throat> historically a lot of the beers that we people see as being ones that uh, appreciate with time are ones that kind of kind of are affected in a positive way by a little bit of oxidization. Yeah. Yeah, a lot it's like not great about having beer. A, yeah. No, it's not a, a bad thing. Of, yeah. And, and yeah, so I opened um, a couple of weeks ago. We've not had um, <coughs> Sierra Nevada celebration in this country for years, <clears throat> and I just happened to have a 2012, 2014, and a brand new one. And we opened them all up at once. The new one was lovely, as it is. It's a nice beer. I um, then the the really old one was l fantastic. It showed that a bit. Of, it showed that it's time. Yeah. In a lovely way, and it softened out. You could think, you can kind of see relationships to kind of, to um, Bigfoot, for example. Yeah. <clears throat> but it, so the malts were coming through, and it was. It, I mean, maybe there was a hint of oxidization. Then see, I've had a, a lot of time and money into that. But then the middle one, which is probably like five, six years old. I, I've still got the bottles actually in, in, in the kitchen. I mean, it's, I was on a poster. A, a gloating photograph on Instagram, <clears throat> and uh, <laughs> but the middle one was fucking terrible. Mm -hmm. and they're both from the same shop, and I, I think it was, and, and they've all been kept in the same condition. Well, the two old ones, same condition, as far as it is like my end. So at some point, when it was probably at the retail, a retail or in, in transport. That's all I can put it down to because it's like, well, why is the the middle one shit? The old one's really good and the new one's really good. I just don't get it. I didn't get it, but it was it was interesting to have old IPA and, and yeah, that worked out nicely. And that's and that's the thing about celebration. Like that's great beer and it's great beer. It's kind of like the old Anchor Christmas beer as far as like a. Uh, like it's like a, I don't even know what to classify it. It's almost like barley wine light, American barley wine light. It's like, you know, and it's like a six percent American barley wine. Like it's it's malt forward, but it's it's hot forward. So it definitely has this kind of cool kind of like aging curve to it, to where it ages Loads fantastically. Of pine and yeah, crystal um, malt and stuff like that. Yeah, and, and just shows how great beers can be when when they're made clean, for the lack of a better yeah. term. Um, and how they'll age really well. So I love that beer. I had it this year. I didn't review it. I just bought a six pack and sat outside and yeah. watched my goats run around and drank it. Had fun, um, <laughs> as I think most people should. Um, but uh, on the opposite end of the spectrum, Kush Crazy actually asks, uh, "Do you guys get slushy beers over there? Like the super fruited, over the top? Like don't let it sit out in your counter for more than eighteen minutes, otherwise it's going to explode." Do you guys get those beers over there? <sighs> There's a bit of it. I mean, there are yeah. people on Instagram who are, who are trading in the UK, bringing in over the US stuff, which look awful, to be honest. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Not what we big. do, there's a, 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 a couple of breweries that are doing, uh, who are doing the higher, higher ABV, kind of um, mm -hmm. tri yeah. um, triple fruit of girls type things, like 8%ers and stuff. Um, some better than others. I don't, yeah, I have a few. North, one of my local breweries, I think, do a good job of it. It's a, there's around like five, six percent, and it's not excessive, it's not really sweet or anything like that. But then Tracker was speaking the virtues of earlier, 
they do the kind of the, I think they go a bit more silly. They're a bit more like eight nine percent, and like yeah, but like fucking what about, fruit pulp. Um, what what one wonder uh, wonder beyond wonder they beyond do, yeah yeah they do a few crazy loads of like yeah really yeah but really overpriced as well yeah like, <sighs> I just don't I don't I don't yeah I don't really I I, appre- I, I enjoy the kind of the, the interest and the breadth of kind of beer but I just don't I don't feel the need to have many of those beers <laughs> once in a while I have a bit yeah. of a go on them but not yeah. something I'm going to go to very often because it's just yeah, it no, unnecessary it, in it it's they're they're like I don't know they're they're a beer like I I rarely have them just oh, for a couple of reasons one because they're obviously not like something I love but if I get one I I can appreciate it, like you're talking about Rob but also they have like a secondary kind of market thing over here in the United States yeah. and I just don't seek them out but it's like one of those things where it's like you can enjoy like if I'm like a food snob and I'm like high fluting fucking French cuisine at the height of everything and I really love food, I can get down with a fucking hot dog off the street and be yeah. like, that's no food and that's cool and I enjoy it, but I ain't eating. I'm not going to eat the fucking dirty hot water dog off the street every day, but I, I'll eat when yeah. I enjoy it. Then I'll move on to what I normally do. That's kind of yeah. like the slushy beer. Like, I'll drink it. Am I going to call it a beer? No. Am I going to say it's a tasty beverage? Probably. Absolutely, yes. But it's just kind of like a novelty. It's it, it, on the edge of things that is fun and a goof. That is really yeah. like, hey, that's fun. That was fun. Now let's get back to the regularly scheduled program kind of thing. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, if I would like, if I like, and let's put it this way is it like slushy beers? If you if you put a slushy beer in the middle, it's like you know how you have the like the dog and you take your dog and you put both the owners like they're divorcing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a mom, a mom and dad divorcing and you put them both on and opposite ends and you, and the judge is like well, whoever the dog runs to is the real fucking owner. If I put <laughs> a fucking lager on one end and a margarita on the other, which direction does the slushy beer run to? <laughs> You know what Margarita. I mean? I think it, I think it runs <laughs> towards the margarita. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not disparaging it for doing that. I don't care that it did it, but to 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 be like, you know, to have Michael Jackson sit down with a fucking 450 North slushy and and talk yeah. about how its its fruit attributes marry well with its lactose and 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 density. I don't think is really something that anybody would really aspire <laughs> oh, to I'd, nor I'd want to hear. I'd love seeing that. <laughs> <laughs> when you say Michael Jackson for a yeah. split second, I did think the King of Pop. I didn't think of the beer hunter. So like, oh no, I was. Huh? I was, was not talking oh, about. Okay. I was not talking about beer, Michael Jackson. I was talking about he's gonna <laughs> back. He's gonna moonwalk into 450 North and chug some <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> but, yeah, no. So there is a bit of it around, but um, I don't. I still don't understand why. Well, I, I was saying this um, maybe last night. I can't remember. I was a bit pissed. Um, but <laughs> there is a bit of a. Um, it's that kind of like new new money new money haze bros. It's people people who there's, there's a certain kind of sect, shall we call them, uh, who got into beer in the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. Who um, then are... Um, um, yeah, Instagram is a, a haven for these people. Oh. Yeah. And um, and once upon a time when, I mean, I'd go into a, a, a good a good pub on a on a, on a on a on a Sunday afternoon or something, and if you fan, if you fancied a chat and you stood at the bar and whoever was next year probably I mean, yeah not everybody but i mean if you were all there for the same reasons you're a nice person and you like you can have a bit of a chat about essentially what's in your glass and you might email oh well wait where are you off next oh we're gonna go down here all right nice one oh come along blah 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 and um stuff like that happens and that's that's a really that's a positive thing it's people coming together over a shared experience I think that's great, and that's what I'm I mean, all it, about. But it, I, I think there's a lot of there's. But I guess my point being, there's a bit of a 
unfriendliness about certain aspects of beer these days, and I think mm. the uh, and kind of the uh, uh, like a braggadocious kind of like element oh, yeah. to it, oh, um, which I think kind of comes. Uh, it's like, oh well, I've got this, and you haven't got it, so you're. Yeah. Which is Nobody. weird because society in general does not mirror that at all. Yeah, I'm joking. Yes. I'm joking. I'm being an <laughs> asshole right now because that's pretty much how everything rolls. But um. Yeah, no, but I guess it's when you do find yourself, it means like whatever you mean. I know might might have been involved in kind of like various music scenes and you know, like tattooing and stuff like that. I mean, and I were in, very much involved in like a kind of like a, 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 a punk scene in the UK. And it, I mean, not everybody's mates, but you're all there for the same reason. And you all kind of like get along, given the given the opportunity. Mm-hmm. You don't all have to be best mates. You know, are like all three hundred people in the same room don't have to be all sh- yeah. uh, sending each other Christmas cards, but you're all there for the same reason. Yeah. And you all respect people, and there was always a there was always a core. You're there to enjoy, enjoy core, it, I guess, core, yeah. core core connection, and there was yeah, always exactly. a, a set of there. There was always a line that everybody knew that was like, okay, you know, we could we could argue, we could bitch and moan, and we could not like each other, but in the grand scheme of things, we'd be in together. But it seems like today that that line doesn't exist, and it's just. You know, one you know, one for all, all for none. You know what I mean, yeah. kind of thing. And it's, it's crazy because yeah. even over here, I mean, like, and I don't want to lump these people into the same conversation, but I, I'm like, I don't know. You guys belong to the Secondary Beer Value Guild on you on Facebook because if you don't, you should really join it just for the sake of comedy. And what it is <laughs> is, is 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 a group of people that are so. Like it's all basically all they do is tell people what beer's worth. That's right. all they do, and it's like literally See, and all they do. Is, for is worth three hundred and sixty. Oh, that, that's all. Yeah, yeah. Because if you go in there saying I have four fifty North slushies, they'll be like, "Get the fuck out! You're an asshole." But then they'll be like, "Oh yeah, I have a two thousand six Fafoon. I think it's worth two grand. Has it elevated to five grand? And people are like, "Well, I sold one for." T- 3500 the other day but you know it tasted okay so it might only be worth 3200 like this is these are legit conversations that happen every day and if you post a if you have a beer you could post what you think it's worth and if you don't follow the format exactly they're like fuck this guy get him out of here he didn't follow the he didn't post the beer format correctly fuck Um, this person he's an asshole and it's like it's pretty much all lambic in Hill Farmstead yeah. Stouts, yeah. basically that's all it fucking is. <laughs> but it's like literally, like people go in there, and, and it's like my. And this is my biggest nitpick in the history of beer, is that people go on there and look for trades, you know. Yeah. And beer acronymism, and that's I'm butchering that, but beer acronyms drive me insane. So someone will be like, ISO. they'll be like I, I, ISO, and it'll be like yeah. BBXY TTSS IS. Not and like nineteen <laughs> different beers, FT, and then nineteen other like XYZ, ZZ, F4, like all this shit. And I'm like, is this like fucking like? Do I need to bring in a wind talker to figure out like what the fuck's going on right now? Like, 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 and and Pete and they're speaking the same fucking language, and it's like, it's like, oh no, you spelt that acronym law wrong. It's it's ZZT two, not ZZT three, and it's like. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> it is a fucking roller coaster ride of the the highest pretension of the most white collar fucking dude bro craziness. I I, I enjoy it. It's kind of like watching Fox News. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds like fucking madness. I guess to say it's like in the UK, like that. it's just very kind of. Elitism and mm-hmm. uh, it's just oh, it's, just, I, I'm all for the nerdiness of it. Yeah, go for it. I mean, yeah, yeah, people, yeah. I, I don't. I'm all for that. I mean, it's when it becomes, what's your intention behind it and stuff? I mean, I I I, I have to hunt down a, a stream of it somewhere. I have it on DVD. Well, I had it on DVD. There's a um, a really cheap. <laughs> made documentary um, called Beer Tickers which is um, primarily filmed around Sheffield which is not a million miles away from me and it's all about weird, the weird um, British subculture of, which is, this is this is all pre 
um, all, all pre untapped and stuff, but um, of ma- primarily older men who were going from pub to pub to to get to. It's like train spotting for beer. Yeah, yeah. going and t- ticking them off. Yeah, and all the peculiarities of the little pastime where it, it's so they can get through more. And the rule is they they, they they have to buy like at least a half, and they've got to drink a certain amount. But a lot of time they'll get these little little fizzy drink bottles and stuff, but they've emptied out. Which are, I mean, they're not like a, a like a what what do you get like a bottle of coke in these days? Yeah. What what measures is that? Don't know. But like a, it's like a small yeah no it's like you know we three fifty five yeah three fifty five oh yeah yeah, yeah so yeah, smaller no, than yeah. that so smaller oh. than that okay and and, they, and so they're filling up their like pipe half glasses so they'll go they'll have a day out ticking. I've met Brian Moore, who's like the who used to be the the, the number one ticker. He was the right grumpy arsehole. Um, <laughs> and, um, and but he, he he'd go into multiple pubs, but he'd go home with like ten bottles. Panda pop. That's one for Craig. Panda pop. Little panda pop balls with halves of beer in, so we could he could class them as ticks. So he goes all around loads and loads of pubs. Yeah. Fucking, but this wonderful little kind of eccentric British kind of like working class pastime. Yeah, very much like train spotting and stuff like that. Yeah, great. But yeah, it's a fun little documentary. I'll have to see if I can find a link or something. Worth watching. My it'll, favorite, it'll, be, it'll be really different to what you see in the US. My uh, my favorite quote from that. That that group, that beer group, is yeah. someone. Someone went on there, and um, they're obviously new to the group. And they asked about a beer that was like uh, not a rare beer. It was basically a semi-attainable beer. It's not something you can see everywhere, but you probably could find it if you really look for it. It's a really good beer. And the person was actually like, like it was like naivete, but in a very beautiful way. That they're talking about, like the beer, and they were like, "Well, I have a couple of bottles of it. I open one. And it's fucking amazing. It's fucking what's that? What's that? Oh, what's is that, that the that the video? Craig's. Who's um, also? <laughs> what is it? The beer the ticker. You showing the beer yeah, ticker videos? Yeah, it's on the and and the person and the and the guy was talking <laughs> about it about how good the beer was and he's like well he's like yeah it's like i'm curious to be like how do you guys you know in, this, in that secondary beer value group they're like like i don't understand but like this beer is amazing and the one and someone responded and i was like this is perfect and they're like it's not how good the beer is it's like how rare it is yeah. it's like it doesn't matter what it tastes like yeah that, that was like literally the, the the whole ethos of the group was like oh it doesn't matter if it's good or not it's just a matter if you can get it and I'm like, yeah. what kind of world is that? Like, 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 like the beer could be hot garbage, but because it, it's rare, that means it's fucking worth something. Like, like that's like, I guess that's kind of like America now. But I mean, still, <laughs> it fucking, it, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah, we got a, a load of Allagash in the UK yeah. uh, this week. And, this beer um, is fucking awesome. I just got this one on Premier Hop as a stout. Oh, right. Lager. Farmhouse Lager. Oh, I guess. Oh, right. Okay. And this is actually, and this is, this was canned in August. So that means you, this is probably one of the ones you got because it's old. Um, Got a lot of, we got a lot of bottles mainly. Uh, Got a lot of sour stuff. Oh, yeah. But this is fucking good. Um, Oh. I, I do have a, a, a kind of a white because I, mean, I had it in in California, but I think it's it's, it's one of those beers that's going to it's going to be well viewed. It's like one of the biggest beers in, like in, in like the craft beers in the US, isn't it? Really, is our yeah. white, and, and um, yeah. So I thought it was worth it. It wasn't cheap, to be honest. When can it was it was five ninety nine for and, one, um, for one can. one can? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was it again? I guess white. Wow, that's I know. how much is a four pack of that? Uh, about mm, that, twelve bucks, twelve American for a four pack. Yeah, right, right. exactly. But it's yeah. the first time it's ever been over here. 
But yeah, it, so but it, here's and that's maybe the same conversation. It's worth it though. The opposite of that group. Yeah. Like it's not it's still worth it. Like it's like tasty enough to be worth that amount. I mean it's a bit of an icon, really. It really is it's, mm-hmm. it's one of those beers. Um no, we've got, um, we've got the triple, but the the one that I think I think Chris Stelts used to always say it was his favourite beer, uh, which is the I think it's like a is it like a bourbon barrel aged triple? So that's with C. I, I have no idea. From, from Allagash. From Allagash, yeah. Is it Carew or something like that? Oh C-R-U- yeah, yeah, yeah. Carux. It ends with an yeah, X. No, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I actually reviewed it on my channel. Uh, it's it's probably Caro, but it ends with the next. Um, mm. That that beer is fucking awesome. I reviewed yeah. it yeah. probably like three or four years ago. No, that's a really good beer. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna get one. I, 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 I always remember. Was it? I think that's a Jim Beam barrel aged coffee beer. Maybe is that what it What's is? Um, Which one? Jim Jim. B, it's a it's a it's a Belgian. I think it's a Belgian. Triple age in Jim Bean barrels with coffee. All oh, right. Yeah, there's lots of um, yeah, lo- there's lots of like the cool shit beers and all that business. Let's see. But I've never seen so much Allagash in the UK. I mean, I, I've ne- I mean, I, I, only Allagash I've ever had was either in America or brought over by a friend. They're I, 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 they're black, they're straight up stout, non-Belgian. That was beautiful. I remember. But I guess they're a brewery of a certain size, aren't they? Where people get a bit like, mm. yeah, this is the beer he's talking about here. This this one, that's the one. Yeah, I'm sure Chris Stellis used to say it was his favorite beer. Yeah, it's a um, it's a bourbon barrel aged uh, triple, uh, and that's it with honey. Yeah, this is a really good beer. It used to come in the big seven fifty bottles, but yeah. now it just. Uh, it uh, just comes in those little ones. That makes sense, though, for me. No, it, it does. <laughs> well, it doesn't, it doesn't, because that's the kind of beer, like, the last time I drank that beer and the last time I think I reviewed it was on, um, like, Christmas. Like, it was, I opened it, I gave, like, a bunch of different people a pour of it. Like, that was the mindset around those kind of beers. It's like you share it with a bunch of people. But now in today's beer world, especially with COVID, you know, those single offering, bo- like, small bottles make more sense. Yeah. 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 That's another one. Yeah, so, got... um, North Sky. It's a stout. Oh, Some yeah. That appeared trivia. as well, yeah. That appeared it's on Trevor and Dallas as well. Seven, five, seventy-five. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean, with the, like, what, let's see, what would I pay for that? I was curious seven, about that, but I looked seven, at it. I looked seven, at it uh, on taps and it was quite low, so. Or was it? Uh, yeah. I was looking before you mentioned it. I was like, oh, curious. Yeah, no, me too. I was so curious. I w- we'd pay 13 American for that over here. For a four pack? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But that, I mean, like, that's the same thing. Like, every single one of the beers over over there that you guys get that are born close to where you guys are. We play this. Yeah. We pay the same markup over here, but it's yeah, also yeah. that like uniqueness, like Rob was talking about, like Allagash, like, I, and like honestly, Allagash was like, Allagash was like a big deal for me, like not just the beer wise, but the visit because I drank their beers. So Allagash used to when I lived in PA and I spent bulk of my time in PA. Allagash was like a revelation when I found them, and it was like I used to get their seven fifties of their double in their Grand Crew. For six bucks and eight bucks, a seven fifty, yeah. and I'm like, what the fuck's going on? Like, and then we're talking about like two thousand, like nineteen ninety nine, two thousand. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? And I'm like, I will drink this all day, all, every day. This is the best yeah. shit ever. And then, right around like two thousand four, they stopped selling beer in PA, so it just went away. And it was super bummed. But I still found their beers, obviously. I would travel, and when I went out of state, I'd find some of their stuff. And it was just like, you know, their their, 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 their ethos, what they thought of, like Belgian beers, table beers, all that kind of stuff. It just always appealed to me. And I never went there. I just never went up to 
to Maine to visit them. And I actually went to the, when I went up to Portland eventually, which was like about like five years ago and visited a brewery. And at that time it was really cool because it was like, you still couldn't buy beer at the brewery. Like they would give you a flight and it was free. It was, no matter what, you just go in and get a flight and it's free, but you couldn't like sit there and keep getting flights. You can get a flight, maybe Love get it. a second one and you had to leave. You know what I mean? Like it, but yeah. it was never cost anything. But they always had a secret tap. Someone told me when you go up there, get the secret tap. Ask them for the secret tap, and they give you some kind of weird beer. And I was like, had this thing huh. built up in my head about this, about about it being fantastic. Like I'm like, oh, this is gonna be the best experience I ever have. And I eventually went up there and I sat down, and the server came up and gave the flight, and she said, "Where you're from?" And I started just regaling her with stories about like. I love that. I didn't say I'm fucking. I do YouTube videos. I was not that guy. I was like, I fucking love Allagash. I'm like, it's fucking. I love this beer. And I was like, yeah. I'm like, I, I told her basically everything I said right now. I'm like, you said buy your beers and you laughed and all that stuff. She's like, that's really fucking awesome. She's like, come with me. And and I was with my buddy Jordan. She took us and took us through their like barrel uh, area and just like by herself. It wasn't like a tour. Like she's like, oh, look at this, look at this, and we drank our beer, and we're like, and we heard about an extra beer, and she's like, yeah, you can have all the extra beer you want. She gave us some beer, and she's like, you know what? Before you guys leave, she got like a six pack, like a cloth holder, and put and put six barrel aged beers in there. Just take them. Just go. You guys leave. You guys are awesome. And we left, and I had like a hundred dollars worth of barrel aged beer. She's like, nah, you guys, you guys are great. And then I left, and I was like, can I live here? I'm like, is this the best place I've ever been in my life? Like, I sit yeah. down, I drink beer, I talk about how much I love the beer, and they're like, yeah, that's cool. What else do you want? And she's like, this is great. Let me show you everything. And then she's like, oh, do you want this chocolate ganache shower? Or do you want this bourbon barrel? Like, not even that. She's just, like, putting shit in sacks. She comes back, and she's like, you guys just take these. Fantastic. Have fun. Yeah. yeah, you guys are fun. <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> Yeah, right. I had um, <laughs> similar like Willy experience. Wonka. Yeah, similar experience in Rome. Um, they um, there's a well, obviously if you go, well, Rome's quite a good beer city. Well, it was anyway, but um, um, so I made sure that uh, where we stayed was a, a seven minute walk from the best beer bar. It's rated as one of the best beer bars in the in, in Europe. So I made sure we was quite near that. So we're going to go there a fair few times. So. It's better to be not too long a distance there, uh, back there on, on a night. Uh, anyway, so we, so we went there, like most days, really. Tiny little place called, called Football Pub. Um, it's actually called Makesieti Venuti Afa, which means, so what did you come here to do? But it's um, affectionately known as the Football Pub. It's got loads of, like, um, primarily... British football um, kits framed on the walls and shit, but um, yeah, just by the by chance we went we went in one night when like Rome was playing, it was um, it was nuts. And uh, but anyway, so we kind of went in there a bunch of times, and uh, and then on like the second or third day, um, they're like they they just kind of we went to the bar and they're like, no no no, it's okay. What? What? Know. Went back and got another t- got another couple. I I had something a bit fancy and extra. Same same again. And it were like give me mine half price as with free. Like what's going on here? Yeah. Why am I? What do they think I'm? Someday I'm not. I'm like I'm like do they think I'm Pete Brown? I mean, I'm like, Who the fuck, what's going on here? And and um, I, 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 they had in the little fridge behind the bar. They had some. Kind of rarities. They had, some, they had like a Narke Stormax Porter, which eventually I got my hands on. And they had KBS. This is pre been able to get KBS. We're going back like going back to like 2011. And um, I was trying to kind of like get these out of these people. They'd be like, oh, "I'll go go and ask the boss." The boss was never fucking working. He was just outside on the street smoking and drinking. And, um, and so they were like, "What's going on here?" And then they owned the little pizza place over the road. And um, we went in there for a meal one night, and um, and he kept the, the owner Manuel came in and were like, he was like, before you go, before you go, come 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 and see me. I'm like, oh, oh, right, okay. 
but uh, I was like, last night of holiday, I went over and I'm like, well, thanks a lot. It's been, we've had a fantastic experience, blah, 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 in broken English and kind of dodgy Italian and stuff. And and he was like, and he, and he disappeared. He came out with this, this bottle of barley wine. And he's like, it's like, here you go. And I'm like, I'm like yeah, how, how much is it? And he's like, no, 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 no. He's like, gift from me to you. Like, All right, cool. So every for a number of years, this this bar would um, charter a, a small um, a small um, ferry between um, Rome and Barcelona, and it was like a bit of a beer fucking like a beer cruise. And they get loads, all the best breweries around Europe, and loads, a, a bunch of their friends from America and stuff. They put on this like kind of a beer cruise between um, Rome and Barcelona, and they'd make a beer every year. And that was the beer that they made the previous year. It was just oh. like, and, and, the, and the and the concept of it was essentially it's like we love this, you love this. We just want to we we just want to enjoy yeah. it all together. Yeah. And it was like, and but because it was so, it was such a bizarre experience. Like, what's going on? Why am I getting yeah. kind of free shit? And it did. I mean, it's not like he thought I was oh, there's fucking some dickhead off of YouTube. It was <laughs> just some guy who likes beer. That's all he's it like, was. He's like, you had a great experience with me. Some, I want to now share a great experience with you. Exactly. Yeah. And that's like one of, That was one of my favorite. Um, so when I, like when I went to Portland. Um, Maine and visited Allagash. This probably the similar experience I had there. So I use this glass. I don't have it. I, I wish I had it in arm's length. I could show you. I use this glass every now and then in a stream. And every now and then, people are like, "Where'd you get that glass?" They'd be like, "I really love this glass. It's it's very unique in shape, but it's really thick, and it's a really great glass. And it comes from a a, a bar called Navari Res." In Portland, and Novari Res has like a crazy. It's like a. It's the. It's a, where you want to drink. Basically, you can go in there. You can get a hazy if you want, but they have like crazy old Belgian, uh, you know, Travist quads aged, like all this crazy beer. But it's a dungeon. Like the, the like your your head's almost scraping oh, yeah. the ceiling. You know what I mean? It's always kind of musty. You know what I mean? Like it's it's just that kind of place. And I never went there before, but like I heard about it and I was like, okay, you have to go there. So after Allagash later on the night, so this is when we're proper fucked. Like later on in the evening. Like we went to Allagash at like two in the afternoon. This is like 10 p.m. And I've been drinking yeah. for nine hours and I've been yeah. drinking everything I can get my hands on. <laughs> we go there and it's packed. It's packed pre COVID, awesome packed. Like you can barely move. And um, and like we 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 kind of walk through and the bar is like this super long bar, like crazy. like I'm I'm amazingly long, like uh, in 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 it kind of does an L shape as most bars do. And but between like the corner where the L shape is and like about like maybe six feet down, there's like a pillar, like a support beam. They're like we have to put this bar in, but we have to leave the support beam because otherwise the building will crumble. Um, so we, we find a space in there and we all, like three of us, kind of glom into that corner. <laughs> and um, there's this old guy, like not super old, and you're talking like late 50s, early 60s, kind of in our space. Like he's like in on, the, on our side of the pillar. So we're like in our own little bubble. And uh, we just start ordering crazy shit. I'm with my buddy George, who's a crazy person. And I, uh, I forget who else we were with, but anyway, um, we're just like, what do you got? You know, like, what do you want? And we're like, what do you got? And we're just going back and forth. And then we start talking to them about crazy beer shit. And they're like, oh, okay. And then they start ripping out like fucking like 10 year old fucking crazy shit. Like can't you own Trey Fonte? Yeah. yeah. Kind of crazy shit. And like every time I'm sitting there drinking, like, like we're like drinking these beers. We're like, we don't care. We're drunk. And we have money, so obviously we're going to pay whatever we want, and we're going to be assholes. And um, this old timer next to me, every time they're like, "Okay, you want this one? Three glasses." I'm like, four, and I just pour one for that guy, and I just put it in front of him. I don't, I'm not even talking to the guy. Yeah, like, yeah. This is yours. You know what I mean? That kind of drunk. Yeah. You were. You're like you're you're drinking with us. I don't even know who the fuck you are, but, but, but you're but drinking gonna, with I'm us. I'm not going to bother you too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And this guy, you're here. 
He's chugging but, you know, crazy old Belgian. I'm like, yeah, give me this 1999 fucking Chimay. Give me yeah. this fucking <laughs> 1960 whatever. We're drinking, and at the end of the night, like, 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 we're just like, oh, I'm, I'm, I gave, I, I put my arm around the guy. I'm like, you're a good dude. I didn't even talk to him all night. Yeah, I just yeah, gave yeah. him beer for the whole night. And he's like, wait. <laughs> he's like, wait one minute, and he bought me a gift certificate and a glass. He's like, just Aww. take it. He's like, I know how much you he, he's like, you're buying crazy beers. You're just giving it to me. I'm like, I don't want anything, dude. He's like, just take it. He's like, don't be an asshole. And I was yeah, like, yeah. okay. And he I, and I took it. And I, I, every time I use that glass, I think of that moment. And I think of that dude just being like, it wasn't like he wasn't like, oh, I have to repay you. He's like, oh, you had a good night. He's like, here's a glass, here's some money, whatever, fucking whatever. And yeah, it was yeah. just a great fucking night. And that's the kind of things that you want to do in beer. That's the thing yeah. that those are the reasons why we do make the videos. So those are the reasons why we make exactly. the channel is to have those experiences. And absolutely. that's why beer is fucking fantastic. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And on that note, I think it's a perfect opportunity for me to bid you adieu. We'll see you, brother. <laughs> yeah, it's been good. Thanks for stopping yeah. by, man. Take care. See you later. Yep, yep. So Craig's left. We are actually going to leave also because I am. We're two and a half hours in. This is um, a quick beer review. Then I was going to talk for a half an hour. We went over by about an hour and 45 minutes. So Craig's going to come back here and be like, Where the fuck did everybody go? But we're just going to end it here. Um, and we'll do a couple of comments real quick just so everybody doesn't get left out here. Um, let's see. We had Adam chiming in saying evening. I agree with Thomas Open. I think you're wrong um, because you're agreeing with Thomas. Um, Dan K saying cheers, fellows. Follows up with that. Been on a kick lately of seeing um, seeking out beers that got me into crap beer from the start. It's been a wild how much my palate has changed and also the nostalgia associated with it. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Sometimes you dive into those beers and you don't like them, but more often than not, I remember them being excellent and they are so it, it, to revisit the old school beers are absolutely fantastic jordan chiming in saying same experience the allagash bar staff took uh to the cool ship and gave us bottles to go yeah i mean it's i mean what do you want it's fantastic the king of beer tube chiming in with a little bit of jokes me saying i will buy that and that is the night. So, uh, yeah. Cheers to everybody at Stop By. Hopefully you enjoyed the impromptu age review. Hopefully you enjoyed hanging out and um, saying what's what. So hopefully you guys enjoyed, uh, enjoyed this little stream. Hopefully see you next time. Hopefully you're chugging some good beers. We'll see ya. Yeah.